What is up, everybody? What is up, everybody? We are here. We're going live. We're talking about 23 ways to invest your money. I'm giving away cash to people who pay attention. I've got my iPhone giveaway ready to go. Somebody's going to get this iPhone, this 128 gig iPhone 7. I don't have the iPhone 10 yet, but uh, more important than that, by the way, what do you guys think of the new, uh, you guys like the new suit? It's a Paul Smith blazer, a little plaid. Maya says she doesn't like plaid, but let me just do a quick question for you. Who wants this $100 to start? I'm going to PayPal one person, the first person to answer this very simply. So $100 to the first person who answers this question. What is the current price of, well, we'll make it easy. What did Bitcoin just go above? The price of Bitcoin, you probably heard of Bitcoin. It was at $4,000, five, here we go. Justin Z the Bean, over $7,000. Justin Z the Bean on Twitter, sending you 100 bucks. Someone else might've said it first, that was the first one I saw. Did you know if you had put now, if you had put 100 bucks, in a room, you took $100 that I PayPal'd you. You put it in a room, we'll call it the Bitcoin room. You walk out of the Bitcoin room and you just go do your thing for seven years. You come back, that room, this is 10 grand. You will say you put 100, it would not just have 10 grand in it. It wouldn't just have 100 grand in it. It wouldn't just have a million. You'd be close to $100 million, you'd be well over $80 million. So my question is to you, does money work for you? Are you the bitch of money or is money your bitch? It's the simplest concept ever. And people really struggle with this concept. They go, well, wow, what do you mean? I say, well, society has taught you to be the bitch. It has. What did it tell you? Get a job, get a college degree, everything works out. There's nothing wrong with having a job. There's nothing wrong with a college degree. But they doesn't work out like that. I wish, it maybe did in 1953, but welcome to a world that's no longer 1953. So you have to ask yourself, do you know two things? Two things. We're talking about 23 ways, different strategies to invest your money. Two things I wanna go over. The first thing is, you have to know what room. The room represents the strategy. Bitcoin is a room, investing in gold is a room, day trading is a room, investing in private businesses is a room, 401ks are a room, annuities are a room, ICOs are a room, high yield lending is a, is a room, investing in apartments is a room, stock options, day trading, Forex, these are rooms, oil is a room. So you gotta know what room and you have to know when to invest, so you got your money here. This represents your a dollar bill. You got to know when to put that dollar bill in the room. And in addition to that, the third thing is you have to know how to get the money to start with. It all starts here. You get some extra money. The definition of investments, money, investable money, is money that you have left over. So if you live in paycheck to paycheck, and you have zero left over, there's nothing to invest. If you have $1,000 saved up, but you would have a heart attack if you lost it, that's not investable assets. This represents how to get investable assets. Listen to me. You have to have investable assets. Your rent money is not investable assets because you gotta pay the rent or you're gonna be out on the streets. So there's three things we have to talk about there's 23 different rooms. There's more, but there's at least 23 rooms. Some of them are very simple, small things, like you could buy and flip cars, for example. You could buy stamps, you could buy whatever. I mean, there's little ding-dong things people do, business, uh, playing cards, people that buy. I have a friend here in LA, he flips antiques. He invests in antiques. He owns the, the three um, of the last James Bond cars, he buys them for 200 grand, sells them for a million. He owns Dorothy's slippers from the original uh, Wizard of Oz. Now, most of us, I don't invest in that, but I'm just saying there's lots of opportunity. So, 
cryptocurrency. Can I have that right there? Cryptocurrency is just one of many rooms. We're going to go through this. You got to know when to invest because, for example, if you bought real estate in 2007 and the next day, 2008, let's say, or the next year when it crashed, you sold it all, your timing was all messed up. So you bought high, sold low, you're broke. A lot of people bought high, sold low. Now, you can't always time it because no one could tell the future. And this number two one, you have to understand what you're talking about. A lot of people have some investable assets. A lot of people know the room they want to put money in, but they don't know when and how. Okay? Very important. If you know this, you're no longer the bitch of money. And I don't care if you're watching this and you're 18 or you're 900 years old. You're Methuselah from the Bible. The rules don't change, just like the rules of gravity don't change. I don't care if some of you tell me you're a badass. You jump off a building, uh, concrete is a bitch. And uh, you won't die from the fall. You will die from the sudden deacceleration in physics. Your feet will go into your head. Somebody said they think people are stupid who are buying Bitcoin. Are you God? You know the future of Bitcoin? Bitcoin could go to 20,000, it could go to zero. Probably not going to go to zero. Probably not going to go to 20,000. Okay? No one knows. By the way, if you meet people that tell you apps, oh, I'll tell you a story. One of the rooms is gold. Okay? Gold is a room, aka a strategy, you can invest money in. I had a buddy three years ago, maybe four years ago, go, Ty, I guarantee you put all your money in gold and you're gonna make bank. Now let me show you, pull up on your phone if you want or I'll do it for you. Let's look at a gold chart, chart of investing in gold. What would have happened? So you just literally type in, it's free, gold price chart. You can take any of the websites, they're all about the same. Let's look at a chart of gold right here. This is called goldprice.org. Oh, damn it, wrong one, let me show. Bullion Vault. Here we go, here's Bullion Vault. You set it for one, let's set it for five years. What's gold done in five years? No, let's actually set it for 20 years. Then you can see the whole chart. All right, 20 years. Okay, let me put this sideways. Let me scroll it, damn it, I got this stupid app. Okay, here we go. I don't know if you guys can see this. Let me turn my brightness down. Brightness is pretty low now. Does it pick that up? That's too low. Damn phones, put it on half. Okay, here we go, here's, my, here's the chart. My friend invested right there when it was at $1,800. Okay, I don't know if you guys could see that. $1,800, it was high. Today it's at 1,200 bucks. That means if you put 180,000 in, and that was in approximately year, I'll get the exact year for you. Damn it, this website. So that was in 2011, 12. So it was like five years ago. And this is about when he told me. I don't remember the exact, it's when I lived in my other house. So it was probably like 12 or 13. And he was buying high. So if he put 180,000 in, he'd have 112,000 now or 120,000 now. So it's super important that everybody watching this understand that you can go in the right room at the wrong time. But, that, but I want you to know that timing is very difficult. So the person, this guy on Twitter, who's so confident in himself, going, oh, I know Twitter's gonna crash. You don't know, I mean, uh, Bitcoin's gonna crash. You do not know that. Very key thing for you to know. You do not know that. If you can tell the future, please get off this call. Go to New York City. Go walk into Wall Street. Open a small investment firm. Invest your own money and money you borrow from people. If you know the future, you will be wealthier than Jeff Bezos. Tomorrow I'm going to a, a talk. Jeff Bezos will be there speaking to a, small, uh, to a group of business owners at this thing called Summit Series. Okay. Richest man in the world. You don't know that. You don't know. Even the richest man in the world doesn't know. So what do we do? What do we do? Let's just get into this. Let's start going through the rooms. By the way, I've got a small test group that I'm opening up. We'll probably have 50 to 100,000 people watch this live. Um, a small group of you, 1% of you or 2% or something like that, I'm gonna let you into a test group 
towards later on in this call. If you want to work with me for three months, me and my team train you how to become a sophisticated investor. It's a paid program. This is a free program. For all you people who get butt hurt when there's paid programs, this is free, so it's free. And you'll learn, I'll teach you stuff free. But if you wanna really rock and roll and focus on this, put your money where your mouth is. That's what I say to people, okay? And, so, and I, that's why I say only one or 2% of people will do that, which is fine with me. I don't care. I don't care. I honestly don't. Sometimes people are like, oh, are you a used car salesman? I'm like, nope. Cause I'm a used car salesman that don't care if you buy my cars or not because I already sold enough cars in life that I don't need it. But I'm not gonna give you, why should I have to give you everything for free? So let's get into this. I'll put up a link later, okay? And um, yeah, all right. So let's, I wanna read a few comments here. Are dollar stocks a bust or a good, you, so somebody's asking about penny stocks. Um, yeah. Penny stocks, you do them right, it's a room. It's a room. You've got to understand the rooms. Stop falling in love with the rooms. If you, if you have a room, different rooms in your house, like this house has 16 bedrooms. I'm not in love with any one given room. If one room starts smelling bad because someone spilled something in it, I'm changing rooms. Don't be attached to the rooms. And the rooms represent the invest, investment strategies. Like Bruce Lee said, be like water. He said, water adapts to the cup. If it's a tall, skinny cup, the water adapts to that. If it's a mug, it goes wider. And that's how you have to be. And that's why I said, you have to learn multiple strategies. I know of no great investor that only has one strategy. Warren Buffett is in, uh, invests in 75 different private businesses. If you look at top hedge fund guys, they got multiple strategies running. They don't just even put all their eggs in one basket. It's okay to focus, but when it comes to investment, the rules are a little different. Okay, let's just pick one that we can start talking about. Let's talk about Forex for a second. One room, one strategy is something called Forex. Basically, you trade currencies. There's different currencies in the world. There's, I think, well, there's about 190 countries. There's not 190 currencies. Small islands don't have their own currencies, but there's more than one. You've got the US dollar is still kind of the dominant uh, currency. You obviously have euros, you have GBP, you have pesos and reals and all this kind of stuff. Okay, we're not talking about cryptocurrency, that's separate. Those are not fiat sovereign uh, currencies. So there's people, you know, there's a guy who traded currencies. He knew what, he knew what room to go in, okay? He know what room to go in, and he made uh, $1 billion in one day. $1 billion in one day. Not bad. He made $1,000 million. So someone said on Instagram, Ty, is Forex sketchy? I mean, I don't know. What do you mean sketchy? Do foreign currencies exist? Are there arbitrage opportunities? Yeah. Is that sketchy? I don't know. It doesn't seem sketchy to me. But if it is sketchy to you, don't go in that room. That's what I tell people. People are like, oh, I don't like that room. Well, just don't go in it. But for those of you who are listening, pay attention to this room. There is a room called Forex, and there's an opportunity for you. Now, Probably none of us will ever make a billion dollars in one day. That is an extreme example, okay? Be smart enough to understand that I'm not saying you will make a billion dollars in one day. If somebody thinks that, if you think that because he made it, you'll automatically make it, then you're too dumb to be an investor. And it is possible to be too dumb to be an investor. You don't have to be a genius, by the way. You don't have to have a 150 IQ to be an investor, but you can't be a moron, okay? Let's be honest. A fool and their money is soon parted. So it's critical that you, as a human being, have enough common sense to be able to get the general principles that I'm talking about. When I talk about Bitcoin, you gotta be smart enough in that room. You gotta be smart enough to that room to understand that just because Bitcoin went to $7,000, that it doesn't mean it's gonna automatically go up another $7,000. 
It just doesn't. One of the rules, I'll tell you, a very good rule. Remember I said one of the strategies you have to understand is when to invest? So when should you invest in things in general? Some of the greatest investors, they have a saying that they follow. They say when there's blood in the street, what that means is a little bit what Warren Buffett said. When people are fearful, you should be excited. When the masses are excited, you should be fearful. You know, I was lucky. I'm, I've been investing in real estate part time for over 10 years. And I remember back in 2007, everybody was saying, real estate, you can't lose. So I understood a principle of timing. When everybody's excited, I should be fearful. And so I didn't do that much real estate investing in 2007 when it was at the top. I was very careful. And sure enough, 2008, it crashed, but I didn't lose a penny, okay? Because they could have taught us this in school. They should have understand. And the reason, for those of you who want to understand the economic principle behind, it's very simple, supply and demand. When the demand gets too heavy, right? Too many people want to invest in real estate, let's say in 2007, the price gets inflated because supply is limited. There's only so much real estate in the world. There's only so much gold in the world, okay? Unless we find gold on other planets, which people are working on, but we haven't found it yet. So gold is in finite supply. Bitcoin is in finite supply. It, get, it grows through something called mining, but there's not infinite. They can't just make new Bitcoin, uh, infinite Bitcoin every day. So what that means is, if you understand simple common sense, when everybody's excited, everybody starts pouring money in, that creates something called asset price inflation. And then you buy high, and when it gets too high, what goes up must come down. Simple rule of physics. So people then get freaked out. They're fearful when they should be excited. The bottom of the market, they sell. You should be buying at the damn bottom of the market. I will give you an example. There's a man named Warren Buffett. In my opinion, he's by far the best business person alive. And he said something very simple. When the market was high, he just kept all his money in cash. And everybody laughed at him. Oh, you know, cash, why are you keeping it in cash? You know you only get 1% interest. He said, because I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the tide to come in. He says, when the tide comes in, you see who's swimming naked. And a lot of people were swimming naked in 2007. Market crashed. He, he bought. He bought 10% of Bank of America when it was crashing. He knew Bank of America wouldn't disappear. It's too big to fail. The US government will step in and never let Bank of America crash. So he bought, a con not a controlling interest, but somewhat. He got a board seat, basically. It's complicated, but he got control of the compensation committee and all that kind of stuff. So he bought this thing, boom, when everyone was fearful at the bottom, oh, the world, sky's falling, all banks will disappear in America, blah, blah, blah. He bought this thing right here. He bought the, he literally uh, came in and bought stuff up, boom, buying left and right, he, with Coca-Cola. He owns millions and hundreds of millions of dollars in Coca-Cola. He waited till everybody was freaked out, some bad news about Coca-Cola. The thing came down. He said, Coca-Cola isn't going ever anywhere. He said, everybody's fearful of Coca-Cola. I'm excited. That's what he said. And he makes $200 billion a year. $200 billion in revenue for Berkshire Hathaway. Let me repeat that. Let me tell you how big that is. McDonald's makes under $30 billion. Under 30 billion. He is seven times bigger than McDonald's. And it's a company a lot of you never heard of, Berkshire Hathaway. So understand that the timing game is a game, is a smart person's game, it's, but it's not a genius's game. It's a common sense game. Do you have common sense? Now, the question is with things like Bitcoin, are too many people excited about it, meaning you should be fearful? In general, most people don't know about cryptocurrency or Bitcoin. so. I'm not sure. I'm on the fence whether I think Bitcoin will go, uh, continue to go up at this rate or if it'll be a bubble. I am, on, you know, like I said, I'm on the fence. I'm not 100% sure. We'll see. Um, certainly, a lot of people have been wrong who said it's not going to go up when it was at $4,000 not too long ago. <laughs> it went up to 8000 
or seven, not, not 8,000 yet, but over 7,000. Hey, that top phone's about to die. The live phone, the YouTube needs to be plugged in. Got some throat croak, coat so I don't lose my voice. Okay, let's keep going through this. By the way, let me just take some live questions. What is an investment strategy or a room that you'd like me to talk about? Let's do it, let's do it right now. What do we got? What do we got? So Joel says, first time here, this stuff is great, thanks. Corey Stone said, Bitcoin. We've been talking about Bitcoin. Something new, investing in music. Uh, you can do that. That's not per se one of the rooms. Stocks, options, trading, Amazon, Shopify, dropship. So we're not talking about starting a business. Let me, okay, this is a good point. Here's, remember I said you gotta know how to get the money? There's a couple ways you can get the money, okay? One of the ways you can get the money. How do you get money? Well, first, de let's define this. What's the definition of investable assets? Does anybody remember? 100 bucks right now. Remember, I'm giving away an iPhone 7 at the end of this. So look right here, 100 bucks. What did I say? Okay. Listen, you guys are already guessing before I've even said it. I said, what's the definition of actual investable assets? Okay, let's go. Let's do it. Uh, let's do for Instagram. Let's give Instagram a chat because there's a little l lag here. Any money over your regular expenses? Mm, warmer, but not warm enough. Save 10% from your earnings. No. Nope. Leftover? Uh, kind of. There we go. Jarrett 50 CAL. Congratulations. You won. Money you can lose and not have a heart attack about okay so let's say who here name some of your incomes what are you making per month let's go what are we going my income people always ask what my income is started out at under a hundred dollars a month went to a hundred thousand a year went to a hundred thousand a week or a month then a week now it's over a hundred thousand a day let's say okay so what are you guys making per month okay we got 25,000 a month, 1,600 a month, 75,000, 15,000 a month. Let's average these. Josh Gilmore is $500 a month. Me Gonzo is 2,000. Nick McGuire is at 50 to 80,000 a month. Uh, Rohan is at a dollar a month. Okay. You, Amy Laureen's at negative one dollar. I'm assuming you're unemployed. Mohammed is at 2,600, 90,000 a month. Nate Thurman, 500,000 a month. Congratulations. 800 a month. 2,500 a month. So if we look at the average, let's just say 5,000 a month, okay? So here's the definition, 5,000 a month. What's your, after taxes, because you, remember you make 5,000 a month, the tax man, especially in the United States, especially in California, takes a lot of that. Let's say it takes 1,500 bucks. So now you're left, after the tax man comes, you have 3,500. What's your expenses? Well, most people's expenses, let's say if you're doing well, you have $3,000 in expenses. So we're left with 500 bucks. Now, that, even that amount is not your investable asset amount. My question to you is out of that 500 bucks, if you put it in a room, an investment strategy, and you lost it, would you have a heart attack? Because if, if you would, then 500 is not your investable asset amount. If, if you could say, Let's just say you're, you have $500 extra a month. How much could you lose and not have a heart attack out of 500 bucks? Let's list it. What do we got? Hamza said, no, five, 250. Lisa Miles on Instagram said 100. Jay said none. <laughs> Duck Uni said 50 bucks. Okay, every number that's being listed now, live, that, my friend, is your investable asset amount. And I don't care if your investable asset amount is 50 bucks or not, that's it. What you can afford to lose after all your daily life expenses are taken care of, that's where you are at an investor. Danto G on YouTube said $10. Well, thanks for being honest. You don't have a big amount, but something's better than nothing. At least it's not zero. And this principle, you might say, why is Ty talking about this? Because everybody misses this principle. They go, oh, I make $5,000 a month and I can invest 5,000. Or people say, Ty, I got 10 grand in the bank. What can I do with it to invest? Well, first of all, you didn't tell me 
your psychological profile. We got to know your psychological profile. Technical scientists, economists, financial planners, you know, if you know, I was a financial planner for many years. I became a CFP more than 10 years ago. I'm not a CFP anymore because I'm not a financial planner. Now I run my own businesses. But there is something called your risk tolerance profile. And I just want you to tell me, okay, it's basically here, right here. The arrow goes this way. You're a high risk person, you're okay with it, and you're conservative. And uh, we'll call this a one, and this a 100. Name your number. How risky are you? Meaning, if you lost it all, are you like, eh, I'll just start over again? If you lost all your money, but you wouldn't have a heart attack, you'd sleep good that night, you're a 100. If you lose a dollar and you have a heart attack, you're conservative, you're a one. What numbers do we have here? Lamonte Sullivan said a 70. Jason said a 140. Jason, you can't be a 140. Uh, Puff King 530 said a 50. So one simple way to think about this, this is not exactly right, but listen to what I'm about to tell you. Basically, the way to think about this is you can think of this as a percentage. So let's say you're a 60. You can multiply, and let's say you have $500 left each month after your expenses are paid. You could take 500 and multiply it by 0.60 or 60%. So that means $300. I'm showing you guys a trick right here, a good one. It's not perfect, but nobody ever told you this before. Listen to what I'm telling you. This is the general way to think about it. If you have $10,000 in your bank account and you want to invest it, don't invest all 10,000. If you're a 30 on the risk tolerance profile and you have $10,000, multiply in your calculator $10,000 times 0.30 or 30%. That's three grand and invest that three grand in a strategy. Does that make sense? That's a very, very, very good way to think about this game. And people get this wrong. Very few people are a 100, by the way. I bet you're not a 100. There's very few people I've ever met in my life that can go to Vegas, take their life savings, bet it on a roulette, uh, on the roulette table, on one bet, lose it all, and go, all right, let's go eat some food. I'm good. I know people that will jump off a building and commit suicide if that happens. Those are the people that are like over here. So know yourself. One of the great philosophers before Aristotle, before Plato, the Oracle of Delphi said, number one piece of advice throughout history from a philosopher, know thyself. And people don't know themselves and they think they do and they say, oh, Ty, you know, I know myself. Nah. You don't know yourself. The mind is an impenetrable fortress. You only learn about it through friends and enemies. Okay? So, glad, we, glad you guys asked about this. Know this. By the way, for those of you about to get in my test group when I put the link up, we're going to go in-depth in this stuff. Give me three months. The school system had from age 6 to age 18, 12 years to teach you this, and it taught zero. Give me three months. We're not going to learn everything in this one freaking, you know, call right here. We're going to get through as much as we can, but is it realistic I can go through 23 investment strategies, make you a sophisticated investor in one call? No, not possible. Physically, mathematically impossible. But I can teach you some stuff today and get you on the right path. You know what blows my mind? Everybody in the world in the gym and they want muscles, which I'm all for. My dad was a pro bodybuilder. I work out a little bit, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a pro bodybuilder by any means, but my goal is, you know, I, I want to, you want to, like I just did my, um, I did my body, uh, sorry, I did my body fat uh, test and I am roughly, I, I did, sorry, I did a muscle test, so I, it's called, um, what's the damn thing, spectra, not spectra, so. DEXA. DEXA, the DEXA truck was just here. 
and it's an x-ray of my body. They did it yesterday. I do it about once every one or two months. And in the last year, I added about 10 pounds of muscle, okay? So you want to add some muscle to your body if you're a guy or a girl, by the way. Uh, usually women don't want to have 22-inch biceps. Rome, if you guys see him on my Snapchat, he's at 21 and a half biceps, big. We got muscle, but where's the people who want muscle of the brain? Do you want muscle when it comes to money? No. People are like, oh, I don't care. I say, how much you pay for your gym membership? 50 bucks a month. How much do you pay for your brain training membership? Zero. Oh, okay, that makes a lot of sense. Remember, you can make money long beyond the time that you can have big muscles. You could be making money. Uh, Charlie Munger's 92 years old, still making, still a billionaire. So I'm surprised that we live in a world where people are like, I'll pay my gym membership, I'll pay a personal trainer, I'll pay for gym equipment in my house, I'll buy weights. But I'm like, are you investing in your brain so that you have muscles around the concept of investing? No. And it's insane. I'm like, how does that make any sense? We live in a world where common sense is no longer common. I hope you'll have common sense. I hope you'll invest time, energy, and money to learn from every place that you can, or else you will be the bitch of money. Mark my words. If you don't believe me, look at this statistic. The average person in America, the average person in America, for every $1,000 they earn, saves 50 bucks a month, okay? The other 900, now that's every 1,000. So let's say someone makes 3,000, they save $150 a month. That's a nightmare. That means you work for the man, and then you give the man back 950 bucks in the form of taxes, in the form of rent, in the form of food. The average person saves 50 bucks for every thousand. If you don't believe me, look at your bank account. How much are you saving for, let's say you make three grand this month. Are you saving more than $150 in your bank? Is your bank account continually going down or staying static, or is it going up? That's a question that I have for you. And people struggle with that one. So that's a person who, they're the bitch of money. And I hope that's not you. And that's the primary goal that I have here. The thing that you must do, the most important thing is, first of all, you want to try to at least save 10%. At least 10 and if you do 10%, you're already double the average population. If you can do 20, you're amazing. That'd be $200. If you can do over $300 per thousand, you're a monster in a good way. You're like somebody with 21 inch biceps. You know what I'm saying? Now someone said they save $700 a month, but that doesn't tell me anything. What if you're making a million dollars a month and you're only saving 700? Tony Robbins says $20, Jake, 20% uh, Jared Greenwald said. The point is, the more the better. Bill Gates, let's do the math real quick. Bill Gates, let's do Jeff Bezos. He's gonna be tomorrow speaking at this thing that I'm going to uh, watch. He has, what does he have right now, 92 billion? Let's just think right here. Richest man in the world, he passed Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, the Zara guy, 92, I think it's, let's just say 90 billion. If he makes 5% on his money, just 5%, because he invests his money, trust me, it's not all on Amazon, he has cash, he has family office, he has diversified assets. What's 5% of 90 billion? It is, what, 4.5 billion a year from investing. Now, divide that by 12 months, roughly, let's just say roughly, that's around $400 million a month. A month. Now, let's divide that by 30. What's 400 divided by 30? Let's say roughly, I don't know, 13 million a day. Is my math right on that? 12, 400, yeah, roughly. 13 million, so let's say he works eight hours a day. He's making, just an interest, by the way, just an interest. He's making at least one million an hour. So people, what's minimum wage right now, 10 bucks an hour? 
depending on what state you're in, eight bucks, 12 bucks, something around there. So the best, wealthiest people in the world have an advantage over us because they have large amount of investable assets. So it's not bad though, you make $1 million an hour, you take a nap for an hour, you wake up, there's another million dollars in there and the thing just runs. Financial alchemy. We're not talking about gold and silver alchemy where you could turn lead into gold. That's what they used to try to do. They never figured it out. It's not possible. But the point being, there are people that are smart enough. Now, I'm not going to say smart. I'm going to say sophisticated enough to understand the different rooms. They understand when to put the money in the room. They understand how to get the money. Let's talk about this for a second. If you have no money, how could you have invested in Bitcoin? 100 bucks made you 80 million. How could you have done Forex trading? George Soros making a billion dollars. Okay, how, is it even possible? No, it's not possible if you don't have any money. Because the rule is you can't make zero in a passive investment into something. Because zero times 100% return on money is still zero. You can do it with a business. You, I've started businesses with zero money and made them into multi-million dollar businesses. So we're not talking about that though today. Some of you are in my programs on how to build a business. Some of you are already entrepreneurs, you're building businesses. That is not what this conversation is about. Today's conversation is about if you've got a hundred bucks sitting around, if you have a hundred grand sitting around, if you have a thousand dollars sitting around, how the hell do you take that and grow it passively? Meaning you sit around and watch it go up. Sometimes it goes down and sometimes it goes up. So here's a simple strategy, everybody here, I'm gonna give this to you right here. Here's you. You have what's called a circle of influence. Boom, boom, your mom, your dad, your friend, your friend of friend, your uncle, your boss, your long lost cousin, the dude that you, you know, watch sports with, all these people. Ask each of them to lend you $100. Now be very careful. This is only for those of you who have self-discipline. If you have no self-discipline, do not do this or you're gonna get in a world of trouble. I'm warning you. I'm warning you about this. This is my little disclaimer. If you have no self-discipline, you're not allowed to do this. I mean, you are, but you're gonna get in trouble. Just don't say I didn't tell you. If you call up my office and go, oh, Ty, I did what you said and turn it into a nightmare, I'm gonna play this video back to you right now, right this part that I'm saying. If you have no self-discipline, you're not allowed to do this because all you're doing is digging yourself a ditch, digging yourself a grave and jumping into it. But if you have self-discipline, then you can listen to what I'm saying. 100 bucks from this person. Now, let's say you do it from 10 people. 100 times 10 is 1,000 bucks. Now you got $1,000. Put it in a bank account. Do not touch it. Tell them you're going to pay them back in one month. But a week later, pay them all back and give them a little interest on it. Usually if you ask your mom for a hundred bucks, she's not gonna give you, you ask for interest. Usually if you ask your uncle. So if it's family and friends, they give you a hundred bucks, send them back a little more. Be like, here's 110 bucks back, okay? Give them 110 bucks back. So yeah, it'll cost you hundred dollars in interest if you do that to 10 people, but guess what? You've now created allies, allies. What makes a great general, the greatest generals in history? Oh, they had allies. Why did America win World War II? Had nothing to do only with our fighting skill. Sure, we were great at fighting, we had great weapons, but that was not the only thing. We had allies. One of them was the United Kingdom, one of them was Russia, one of them was Australia, one of them was New Zealand, one of them was France. And by aligning our interests with other allies, we defeated Hitler, we defeated Italy, and we defeated Japan. And if you don't have an ally strategy, you are a fool of a general. Name one general who does not have allies. I can't think of one. Well, I can think of one. Adolf Hitler didn't have many allies. He only had Italy, which wasn't a great army. They said the, the Italians were great lovers, but horrible fighters. So he had, didn't have a great ally there, and he had Japan, who was a pretty badass fighting force, but it's not enough two allies against 10 allies Guess what? Now, somebody will ask, is this a Ponzi scheme? No, 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 no. You do not understand what a Ponzi scheme is. A Ponzi scheme is what you do if 
this is how people like Bernie Madoff do it. You take a hundred bucks, you keep it all, you spend it on going to Disneyland, and then when people ask their money back, you borrow money from other people. Do not do that. That is against the law to do a Ponzi scheme. You're gonna give everybody their money back. What kind of, how's that a scam? And you're giving them back the money quicker than you promised. What you're actually doing is the same thing people do with credit cards. With credit cards, guess what happened? Guess what happens with credit cards? You pay off your credit cards early, they increase your credit limit. You pay off your credit card, you don't pay off your credit card, your score, your trust score goes down, your Equifax score goes down, your TransUnion uh, score goes down, and guess what? You don't get much money. So if you can't understand that concept, then you have no place as an investor. If you don't know the difference between a Ponzi scheme um, and real investing and building up credit score, okay, this is a mental credit score you're doing. Yeah, you create allies. Now you can come back to them and ask for 500 bucks. The key thing is you give them the money back. There is no scam. Do you think Bernie Madoff gave people their money back? Do you think Enron gave people their money back? Those were scams. The people went to jail for it because they took their money. You're not taking, you're giving back. Use your brain, people. Understand, people don't understand what they're talking about. Financial illiteracy is at an all-time high, even though the primary thing you're supposed to go to university for is a career, which is financial literacy. How you can have a financial literacy level that's high and sophisticated if you don't know this stuff, I'm worried. Sometimes people are like, are you mad? I'm like, no, there's a difference between mad and being worried. I'm oftentimes worried about planet Earth, the things that I see people write on social media. I'm like, either you're four years old, uh, you're joking around, or this world's in a bad place. And unfortunately, I think it's the latter one. I think the world's in a bad place financially, and a lot of the stuff that I'm doing is trying to share what smart people have taught me and what I've learned with my own experience. Does that make sense? So, it's all three. Yeah, it is all three. That's a good point. Who said that? Bronx Villa. So, by doing this over time, you start showing people that you're trustworthy, okay? Now, just make sure for the rest of your life you stay trustworthy and you're good. Now. Let me give you a little side note. If you start borrowing money, large sums from people, you have to follow the law. You need to do it with a lawyer because eventually, when it's your mom, the law actually has an exemption for friends in like your best friend in family, especially for a hundred bucks, nothing's gonna happen. If you start raising like a lot of money like this, you have to do it through a law firm because there's specific laws on disclosures and you know prospectuses and what's called a PPM and all this stuff, okay? That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about your uncle for 100 bucks. Jeff Bezos, richest man in the world, the way he started out, he got his parents, his parents, his mom and his dad, put $300,000 into Amazon.com in 1994. Okay, that's allowed. It's his own parents. There's special exemptions in the law that if your parents get, now you can't lie to your parents, that's against the law, but if you do it, and I recommend anything that's a large amount, okay? When you start doing, let's say over $1,000, you should do it with a lawyer. If it's 10 bucks, okay, and you're borrowing 10 bucks from your mom, you're good, all right? Just pay your mom back. Because here's the problem, and this is where people mess up with investors. Never bite the hand that feeds you. And when you stop paying people back, it's better for you to skip a meal than skip an investor payment. Pay the damn investors back, always, or else you bite the hand that feeds you. And the more you bite the hand that feeds you, the less hands will ever feed you. Now, eventually the goal, there is another strategy that I like, and that's what I've been teaching people, start a part-time business to create cash flow. That's what I did. I had a social media marketing agency test group one year ago. I took a handful of people that follow me and I said, I'll show you how to start a social media marketing agency. Jaden Gross made one point, I think $1.1 million in the last 12 months. He had zero dollars in his bank account, didn't even have a bank account one year ago. Um, I launched a program 
uh, recently how to make money online, how to do drop shipping and sell things online. One of my students that was here at a seminar, he was making 20 grand a month in August. Right now, he's actually flying out this Thursday from Europe where he lives, he's making 200,000 a month. So he's 10 x his money in two months. Okay, and he takes the cash flow and he now has money to invest. So you can start a part-time business. That's even better than this. I'm just giving you multiple strategies to raise money, if that makes sense. Okay, there's multiple ways to skin a cat. So let's talk about some more investment strategies. Let's talk about, uh, we talked about gold. We talked about Forex a little bit. Let's talk about, you know one I love? I didn't talk about this before. Uh, investing and flipping businesses. This one's a little more advanced, but this one's amazing. Four years ago, two business partners weren't getting along. So I said to one of them, one of them wanted out. He, they, the two business partners weren't getting along. They owned a company, 50-50, an online business. I'm not gonna say what the name is, just because confidentiality. And since I'm saying they didn't get along, I don't think they want everybody to know. But I bought, so I went to the guy, he said, I wanna sell my 50%, I don't want, I wanna move to, he wanna move to New Mexico get away from California, and relax. I said, look, I'll give you 10 grand a month and I'll pay you over like, I think five years, 10 grand a month, you give me your 50% of the company. He said, hmm, that's not bad. You mean, Ty, every month I get 10 grand a month, I can just go retire, do no work, lay, you know, he was like a kind of a laid back hippie kind of guy. He's like, dude, I can live off two grand a month. I'll have an extra 8,000 a month. So he said yes to the deal. So I took the company, I put, I, help, I wrote him a check, $10,000 down, okay? That wasn't the whole, I purchased the whole company over 10 years, it was gonna be like four or $500,000. We had a little bonus structure to it if it did better, but let's just keep it simple. Then what I did is I, and I got 50% of the shares in that small company. It was a company that was making about a million, maybe $2 million a year, okay? It's relative, you know, not super big, not super small, just like, so here's what I did. I added value to the company. I helped it improve its email marketing. It went from 100,000 a month in revenue to 200,000 a month in two weeks. Two weeks! So I took my skill, I improved the business, doubled the revenue, then I took a distribution of the money, the profit, and I paid myself I forget what, I think I got paid like 80 grand a month. So I got a check for $80,000 within 30 days. So I put 10 down, I got 80, and that went on month after month after month. How'd you like to be able to take 10 grand in one month and get 80 grand back? That's what I did. And then what I did is after one year, I was kind of bored with the business. It was a small kind of, now I'm more interested in larger businesses. I took my 50% and I sold it back to the other investor for more than I paid. So I made basic, and I put no work in except I would call on the phone and give them some strategies. So you can buy businesses from people who are retiring. A lot of old people, they can't find anybody. I got a buddy who just bought a fence business in Orange County. A guy has a fence business for 30 years. He puts up like literally like fences in the backyard. He's an old dude, he wants to get out of the business, but he doesn't have anyone want to buy the business. So my buddy, He's like 28 years old, called him up, said, I'll put a little bit of money down, let me take over the business, and then he just takes the money he makes from the business and pays the guy off. It cost him nothing, and he owns 100% of a fencing company that makes a couple million bucks for 20-year track record. He inherited all their customers, he inherited all their banking relationship, all their clients. It's bad, I mean, where'd they teach us this in school? There's so many people in this world that are retiring, the average person, business owner is over 50 years old, they don't have a lot of buyers. You can buy their car dealership, their used car dealership from them, and you can do it with only a small amount of money down. I'm gonna make a test group one of these days, but in this test group, I'm gonna make a test group eventually just on flipping businesses, maybe in a year or so, but right now, for those of you who get in the test group, I'm gonna put up a link a little bit. One of the 23 investing strategies I'm gonna put in as a bonus is how to, invest and flip businesses. People flip cars, people flip real estate, great. What about businesses? Most money in the world is made in businesses. Look at the top richest man in the world. 
Jeff Bezos, through a business. Number two, Bill Gates, through a business, Microsoft. Number three, the Zara guy, through the Zara clothing line. Number four, Warren Buffett, he owns 75 businesses. He buys and flips them too. He buys airlines, he made 100 million bucks buying and flipping an airline. There's money in the streets, people. You gotta know what street to go in and you have to know how to see it. It's kind of like the movie, The Matrix. Most people don't see reality. They think they see reality. Most people see poverty every, when I was growing up, I grew up with a single mom. I, actually, my mom's here in the house visiting. I don't know where she is. She, she lives in a different city, but she comes to visit. Grew up with a single mom. My mom probably, I need to ask my mom. Remind me to ask her, she's here. What's the most money my mom, I think my mom never made more than $2,000 a month. So I was in the matrix. I was caught on the wrong side. <laughs> I had the wrong pill. I went through public school, wrong pill, wrong pill. And that, you know what that pill taught me? Uh, there's money's scarce. Investment opportunities are scarce. That's only for wealthy people. That's only for rich people. Then my eyes were opened up by meeting a set of mentors that trained me in person, through books, through conferences and seminars and online courses and everything. I've done everything to open my eyes to reality. Really, I open my eyes to reality. And I don't care, some of you are struggling financially right now. Some people think, oh, Ty doesn't empathize with me. Of course I empathize with you. I remember my, my teenage years, most of them were spent in a mobile home, okay? It was a double wide mobile home, so it wasn't the worst kind of mobile home. But, you know, I didn't grow up in a house like this. This is 16,000 square foot house. So wherever you are right now, I've probably been in a similar place. I remember the stress of not being able to pay the bills. And what I'm trying to tell you now is if you go away from this call and keep doing what you've been doing, I can predict that you'll continue to have the same pain. Really. Continue to have this, the same pain that you have now. So you have to ask yourself, do you follow the words of Albert Einstein, one of the smartest people to ever live? He said, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. Some of you are gonna just walk away from this and go, oh, well, okay, I'm just gonna work a little harder at my job, I'm just gonna do the same thing over and over and things are gonna work out for me. No, it doesn't. You keep beating your head against the wall, the only thing, the wall doesn't change. You beat your head against a concrete wall, there's at no time in the future where you're banging your head on a concrete wall, the wall suddenly gives in. Your head gives in, your happiness gives in, your health gives in, and that's where we are in the world right now. Joel Salatin, my first mentor, told me, Ty, there is no change without a change in routine. What's your change strategy? Somebody list it. What's your change where you say, you know, what am I going to do different tomorrow? What are you going to do different tomorrow? What do we have? I'm very interested to see what people's strategies are. Write lists, okay. Feel different. Get out of your comfort zone. Where I need people to be more specific here. Workout cardio, that's gonna change your body. You're gonna get a six pack of the stomach, the abs, but where's the six pack of the mind? Wake up earlier. Waking up earlier is great. I've n I have not found that that really matters. It's how many hours you put in and how smart you do it. It's okay if you, you know, wake up early, they're not gonna hurt you. Read a book a week, that'll help. That in and of itself is not enough, but that is a great help. Build your bank account. How are you gonna build it though? Where's the specific, I need specificity. You can't have, people have very vague goals. I'm gonna give you a practical goal. You could say, I'm going to take $50 and invest in Bitcoin. Now I don't care, by the way, I don't make any money if you invest in Bitcoin. I don't, I'm not on the Bitcoin board, nothing. But you could say, I'm gonna just test this game and see if it goes up. And maybe I lose all my $50, or maybe I don't, but out of it, you will become a more sophisticated investor. Your goal should not be to immediately become a millionaire or a billionaire. That's not how life works. You don't immediately get anything good. Name one good thing you get immediately. You don't get muscles immediately. If you're unhealthy and you weigh 50 pounds too much, you don't instantly go 
and cut 50 pounds, unless you do liposuction or some weird thing, and half the people die who do these tummy tuck things. If you try to change too fast, you die. But you can make a one thing, if people are overweight, you can go in your kitchen cabinet and you can throw out every piece of junk food so you don't tempt yourself. That's a practical thing. But now we're talking about a practical thing when it comes to you becoming a sophisticated investor, understanding the 23 different strategies, the different rooms you can put money in, understanding when to put it in, how to get the money, you know, understanding timing, understanding what you can't time, you can't time everything. Someone said, how do you stop unhealthy habits and addictions? You know, that's a good question. One of the things, we have unhealthy habits and addictions when it comes to money. The average person, if they make an extra $1,000, they spend it very, 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 very quickly on something one year later they can't even remember what benefit it got them, whether it be you know a trip or something. I mean, there's when you travel, I like travel. You put a thousand bucks of traveling, you can get some benefit from it, but most people, you go to Disneyland, a year later, there's no benefit. It's not like you were business networking, not like there's some end game to it. It's just you felt good that one day, you know? So one way to break a habit, and the best way to break bad money habits is change who you surround yourself with. Without a doubt, look, I had a little, some of you saw in the last couple of weeks, I did some business networking parties at my house. The other day I had, um, I went out to a club. Some of you guys saw this on Snapchat. And I brought like 10 friends. Some of them I didn't know. Some of them were friends of friends, new people I met. And there was, I counted up how much money was at my table. It was 6.5 billion in net worth. There was two billionaires there, one on the Forbes list. There was a couple guys with two or three hundred million dollars. So I was changing my environment. I grew up in an, an environment as a kid where I never met somebody who even made a hundred grand. So 6.5 billion net worth. How do you think that changed my mindset? What do you think that did for me? Do you think that made me more motivated or less motivated? Do you think that made me wake up earlier or later? Do you think that made me more incentivized to break bad habits that I might still have? So you gotta ask yourself, let's put the number right here into the live, into the live chat. How many hours a day, in, I'm sorry, how many hours in the last week have you spent around people that are where you wanna be in 20 years? People 20 years ahead of you financially. How many hours? Okay, thanks for being honest. Babywell17 said zero. Justin said 20 hours. Justin, really 20 hours in close contact? Who were they that were 20 years ahead of you? None at all. Zero, zero. I've seen a lot of zeros. In the last week, 30 minutes, two hours, three hours, my finance professor. Now, do you, let's talk about this finance professor. Do you want to be a finance professor? Because I don't think finance professors count. Now, I'm not saying you can't learn from a finance, pronouncer, uh, pro, finance professor. Of course you can. But if you want to learn to get in shape, do you learn from a fat basketball player? Or do you learn from LeBron James and Steph Curry? Like, you, you choose. I'm talking about people who did it. Not people who talk about it. People who did it. Okay? You can still, I have mentors who are professors, but limited amount. You think I want to learn real estate investing from somebody who wrote a book on how other people invest in real estate or just go straight to the source, somebody who actually did it, okay? Someone said two hours maybe. So if you look at the average here, probably the average person is spending under two hours per week around people who are where you want to be in 20 years financially. Guess what? I can predict something for you. If you don't change that, 99.999999% of you who wrote that, you will be in the same or worse financial precarious situation in 20 years as you are right now. Things will not get better. You don't believe me? Okay. What makes people better at a sport? Hanging out with people who can't. How many, Ronaldo, one of the top soccer players, football players in the world. How many hours a day? or a week does he spend around people who are good at soccer? Uh, probably almost all day. How many hours does LeBron James spend around badass basketball players? 
Zero? No. He's spending, I mean, you look at pro, you look at pro basketball players, fix this side, he's probably spending three to five hours a day, at least five days a week. If you count games, he's competing against great people. Ronaldo's competing against great people. So let's just say three hours a day times five days a week. That's 15 hours. Let's say 15 to 25 hours. That's what pro athletes do to become great at their sport. Do you want to be great at money, great at financial sophistication? Do you want to be happy, healthy, wealthy, and wise? Then you've got to put in the time. Now the problem is, who the heck has access to those people? You know, I said that, you know, 6.5 billion in net worth. When I started out at 19 years old, I knew zero people who even made 100 grand. There's a few things that I would say to you that makes the world better now. One, you have the internet. So right now you're live streaming through a talk like this where you can actually learn. That's pretty cool. Number two, modern airplanes are very cheap. You can get on airplanes and go to conferences and go to seminars, okay? Even if you don't have much money. If you don't have much money, you can get on a bus for, you can go across the United States for under $100 on a bus. It's a little bit painful, but I've done it before. I've done it on a train, I've done it on the bus. So you can move around. 50 years ago, it, you couldn't move around like you could now. So you can get to where you need to be, whether it be through the internet, whether through, bo through books. Now books are cheaper than they've ever been and they get shipped to your door on Amazon overnight. Okay, it's insane. And people still, people still are so lazy, they're learning less than people did 50 years ago when it was harder. That's the sad world that we live in. You make things easier for people and they get lazier and they get more entitled and they become more brats. You know what I'm saying? So I spend $30,000 a year minimum on books per year, 30,000. And I remember when I had my first $18,000 saved up, 18,000, I remember my largest expense in that year, I spent two or $3,000 on books. I basically spent 10, over 10 to 20% of my income or my net worth on books, and it paid off, paid off. So I want you to start taking practical goals that you will become a learning machine. Learning machines do well in this game called the modern day life. Ignorant people, their reward is this. So you pick your poison. We're all gonna die. Money's not everything. But let's talk about what is money. This is an important thing. People don't get this. Maslow's hierarchy of needs. There's five things, five levels. The psychologist Maslow said, bottom is physical needs, or he called it physiological. We'll call it physical. The second is safety. The third is love. The fourth is respect. And the fifth, we'll call it self-actualization, or you could even call it spirituality, whatever you say. Notice, all five of these must be accomplished for you to have a good life and be happy. Some people say, oh, money isn't important. What do you mean money's not important? Money is the foundation that gets you the other three things that aren't about money. See, money doesn't get you love, but if you don't have money and you don't have, feel safe, especially financially, you'll be so stressed out that you'll either ruin your relationship or you won't have time to go find one. So this game of life is a foundational game, physical safety. Then you have time for love. Then you can get the respect that you need to feel good. Then you can find the self-actualization, the spirituality, the higher purpose, the charity. Someone said, Rosie said all she needs is love. But Rosie, you're forgetting something. They forgot to teach us in school. Number one cause of divorce, not having these two bottom ones, meaning your love will be sabotaged by not having these two. So you can't oversimplify life. People oversimplify life, say love's all you need. I wish that was true. What about food and water and shelter? You don't need those? You just need love? You're just gonna hold somebody in your arms, starving, thirsty, <laughs> in the middle of the wilderness? No, you're gonna die that way. Rosie, we won't want you to die. You must have food, shelter, water, and you must feel safe, okay? And then, then your brain will free you up for love. Then your odds of divorce 
dramatically decrease. Then you're, you know how many people break up because somebody feels so much financial pressure because parents, husband, wife, they're working two or three jobs, they come home stressed, they're arguing over how to spend money. Google it, it's the number one reason people break up. There's other reasons people cheat and all that, but I'm just saying the number one is that. And sometimes people cheat when they don't feel safety. It's a fact, by the way, you guys, there's a great book by Dr. David Buss, The Evolutionary Psychology Textbook, that's used at Harvard and Yale and Princeton and Stanford and Oxford and Cambridge. He says very specifically, when men, and you could, I'm not gonna say about gender too much, this is just what the textbook says, when a man doesn't provide physically and, safe, and safety for his family, sometimes people go looking for love in other places. Now, I hope that never happens to you, but I'm just, telling you the facts, and some people can't handle that fact. But welcome to planet Earth. The world works in cause and effect ways. You cause people stress, the effect is they move away from you. So when it comes to investing, you need two main skills to create this. You need the skill, number one, number two, of creating cash that's investable and then you need to know how to invest it. It's so simple, man. Everything is, you know, keep it simple, stupid, K-I-S-S. -S. Please keep it simple, stupid. The thing is simple. So keep it simple, stupid. Some of you are creating cash that you could invest, but you don't know how to invest. Some of you ask me how to invest, but you have no cash. You've got to have both sides of the equation. I've talked a little bit of how to do this. I've talked a little bit on this. I need three months to really go deeply into this, but let me answer some quick questions. Somebody said, where can you turn for help? Well, start where you are. You're right here right now. I'm not the only source. I don't know everything. Learn what you can from me and what you can't learn, learn from somebody else. People say, oh, I'm gonna learn it all on my own. No, you won't. What investor, what doctor learns surgery all on their own? You're just gonna chop people up kill the first 100 people? No, you go into residency. What is residency? It's an apprenticeship, it's an internship. You know, That's why people like the show Shark Tank. You go on there and you talk to other experts and you see if they buy into your idea and if they don't, maybe they're right. Make war with a multitude of counselors. Ty, can you be my mentor? So here's the thing about mentors. I don't really consider myself mentors. I talk a lot about mentors, but I talk about the mentors and what they taught me. Uh, I do like creating test groups with me and my team and different business partners. So that's the closest that I can do. I have over 100, I think Facebook just hit over 200 million people have watched my stuff. So I, it's not possible that I can mentor, you know, even a small fragment of that. And, and I'm not necessarily, when it comes to investing, these 23 strategies, some of them are highly specialized. Like gold is not my specialty. So, but the cool thing about where I am now at life is if I don't know it, I know the top experts in the world. So what I do is I bring them in, I put them in the test group, they teach this stuff. As we speak, one of my business partners is in another room recording new lessons for the test group that those of you who get in today are gonna get access to those videos and he's a badass. His business in the last 10 years has made $1 billion, $1 billion. He has the number three Gro highest grossing, highest sales app in history. On iTunes, he's number three, I mean on Apple Store, number three of all time. He's done a couple hundred million dollars through his app. So he's also really good, like an expert. He's a PhD, went to Berkeley, invests his own money on techniques that's too advanced to even put in the course, but we're putting a ton of them in. So those are the kind of people you learn from. One of my friends owns a huge gold company He'll be the one teaching gold. I know the top cryptocurrency guys, the top Bitcoin guys, billionaires, in crypt, they're calling crypto billionaires. They'll be teaching you in my program. So what I do now, I teach the things that I'm experts in and then I bring in the other experts. It's just like going to Harvard. I didn't go to college, you go to Harvard, there's no one professor that teaches at all, but you go to Harvard because Harvard has badass teaching from multiple sources. That's what my test group is. And the cool thing is, here's the problem with Harvard. If you went to Harvard, you'd make a lot more money in your life. Every single person, let's not kid ourselves. If you were going to Harvard right now, trust me, 
when you graduated, you'd get a better job, a very high paying job, you would make a lot of money. But, 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 you come out with about one to 300,000 in debt if you didn't get um, scholarships. Number two, you know how hard it is to get into Harvard? Like, be my guest. For me, uh, it wasn't an option. And you can be smart, you still get, can't get in. So what I've done, I've democratized this thing. Anybody can get in. As long as you're a good person, we will kick out annoying people. So basically, it's not who your mom was, who your dad was, because Harvard has something called a legacy exemption, meaning if your mom and dad went to Harvard, you're more likely to get in. That doesn't seem fair to me. Like, why is that fair? It should be merit-based. But no, that's not how those universities work. If you went, you get extra consideration, they call it. If you're rich and your mom and dad donate to the Princeton or Berkeley or Harvard endowment fund, trust me, you get a little, uh, a little push in the admissions office. Now, there's nothing against the law for them doing that. It's a private university. They can pretty much, as long as they don't discriminate on race, gender, all that stuff, they can, they can, they got those applications. They go, oh, I don't like this person. They look you up, I guarantee you, I don't know if they say they do this, they're looking you up on Facebook. Now they can see what you look like. So there's probably still racism at the top schools. I don't know about Harvard, but I'm just saying. Yeah, they're looking up, oh, well, this person, oh, they're, they're out at a nightclub. Oh, so I'm like, forget all that. I don't look who you are. I don't look where you live. You want to learn, be in my test group, get in. As long as you're not an annoying person. As long as you have a semblance of common sense. Now, the other problem with Harvard is if you come in and out and it wasn't what you wanted, there's no refund on your money. All my test groups have 100% money back guarantee. That's why I always get a kick out of people who say, Ty, is this a scam? I'm like, what are you talking about? How can you get scammed if you can get a refund? Name a scam that gives you 100% refund. Name one. Anybody. Name a scam that gives you 100% refund. How could it be a scam then? It wouldn't have scammed anybody because they got all their money back. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is the common sense level of the planet. Like Walmart, you can't get scammed because you can return anything. Walmart, Sam Walton, one of the top businessmen of all time, created a policy of you bring it back. You don't even need the receipt at Walmart, meaning Walmart sometimes gets scammed. People will buy it from one store that didn't have a receipt policy, a return policy, bring it to Walmart, and now they get a refund. So Walmart can't scam you because you can get your money back. Very important. Amazon. Yeah, I don't know. Does Am Amazon has some level of refunds. Um, Someone said, I like the way we think. <laughs> You're talking about who's we? Somebody said, Primerica. Primerica is, I don't know, that's like a multi-level financial company or something. I don't know, do they give refunds? That's all you gotta ask yourself. Do they give refunds? You can't get scammed by a damn refund company. So. I created 100% money back guaranteed. Let me talk real quick on a couple quick things. And then I want to get to the test group. I got to head downtown here in a little bit. Um, I'm going to something, business thing. Like I said, Jeff Bezos will be there. Kobe Bryant's going to be there. Watch my Snapchat in the next little while. Reed Hastings, founder of Netflix, is going to be there. It's a private invitation. It's pretty cool. OK. Um, so let's talk about, like, real quick, some other investing strategies that I've found. You have, I'm just going to name some. Day trading, penny stocks people were asking about. These are different ways. Flipping cars, oil and gas. I got a buddy that does this. There's a lot of tax benefits. You can get these credits and all this crazy thing. You can invest in movies. The guy who did Get Out. How much did Get Out cost? Two million dollars, 10 million dollars? Has made a couple hundred million back if you invested. One of my friends plays in the NBA, pro basketball player. And um, he invested in a movie, made his, like, 5x on his money in usually movies take about three years so but not bad 5x in three years right you can do something called high yield lending where you 
lend to people. Now you gotta do this with lawyers because there's specific laws, especially in the United States, but you can do it. I got a buddy who, he's out of New York City and he created, a, he lends money to people that can't get loans, high yield lending. And he has to follow the law, like New York, he's in New York, it's like super, like some people call it hard money. There's different names for it. Um, I'm not talking about a loan shark either. He's not a mafia loan shark. But there's ways you can legally lend money. Don't do loan sharking. You don't want to do that. I talked about business flipping. This is one of my favorite, man. Especially with the internet. We got uh, gold. I'm just going to throw a whole bunch on here. We've got cryptocurrencies. Let's talk about cryptocurrencies for a second. So not only do you have Bitcoin, so this is the largest cryptocurrency, Bitcoin. Remember, cryptocurrencies mean they are not emanating from countries. They're not sovereign currencies. They're not US dollar. They're not pesos. They're not uh, GBP. They're not uh, um, uh, euros, okay? They're not kroners. So yeah, Bitcoin. Number two, you have Ethereum. One of the co-founders of Ethereum was at my house, if you guys saw, a week or two ago. Him and about, I think, seven guys started this thing called Ethereum. Ethereum's number two. And then you have what's called alternative coins, okay? So the, on a day-to-day -day basis, Bitcoin by far is the largest. It's about six times bigger than Ethereum right now. Ethereum's been going up. But in terms of trading and liquidity, Bitcoin is by far the largest one today, okay? Now, someone said, is the Bitcoin train over? I don't know, I was at a crypto dinner last month and I was talking to the number one crypto lawyer in the world. These guys are at a, company, uh, at a law firm called Perkins Coie. And I said, what's your opinion? He said, bet on Bitcoin. That's what he told me. That's one of the best guys in the game told me. So again, like, you don't have to believe me, but that's what a really smart guy in the industry. He said, Bitcoin still has liquidity. There's like so much stuff in Bitcoin. So you have Ethereum, you have alternative coins. There's tons, there's Ripple. I just had somebody that's launching a, 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 a ICO who's got a, something they're launching called SenseCoin. And I mean, you name all the Litecoin, all these alternative coins. There's probably, I don't know, I think there's a couple thousand I can't even keep up with all the alternative coins. And now you have what's called ICOs, initial coin offerings. So these different companies are launching their own new token. Okay, this, some people call them tokens, some people call them coins, depends. All right, and so cryptocurrency is probably here to stay, nobody knows. But if you ask Bill Gates, one of the smartest men on the planet, he says he doesn't think governments will be able to stop cryptocurrency. Okay, someone says, are ICOs scams because there's no laws on them? There's more and more laws. The SEC is putting out laws. China has outlawed ICOs. Russia just brought a currency. They, it's funny, Russia made cryptocurrency illegal, but then they made their own cryptocurrency. <laughs> which is, there's something called the blockchain, which is even more important, potentially, than cryptocurrency. For those of you getting the test group, we'll be teaching you about the blockchain. The blockchain is a protocol that may become, many people think it will replace the internet. I just said it, it will replace the internet. 1994, the internet transformed, began to transform the world. It's disrupted industries, it's disrupted the hotel industry and the airline industry and Uber's taken over the world and all this, that's the internet. There's a potential that blockchain, okay, which is kind of the underlying protocol of all these cryptocurrencies will become the most powerful force on the planet, okay? So no one knows exactly, it's still early in the game, but blockchain is pretty cool. It's a way to democratize and, and decentralize everything. Real estate can be put on the blockchain. I mean, democracy can be put on the blockchain. No longer would you need large governments, no longer. So, if you are a far out person and you like the conspiracy theories and you like to think outside of the box, man, blockchain, crypto is right up your alley. So like I said, there's a ton of strategies here. 
and you need to learn this stuff. Even if you don't want to do crypto, let me ask you a question. Even if you don't want to flip businesses, even if you don't want to do gold and you don't want to invest in the stock market and you don't care about a 401k or annuities or ins investing in life insurance or Forex or day trading, you still must have a level of sophistication to you. You know, when I go to, why do you think I wear, I'm dressed up right now? I'm going to a business thing and people expect you to be knowledgeable. They expect, they have expectations and you have to basically not be an idiot. If you want to raise money for a business, you got to know a little bit about a lot of stuff. Now you can be an expert in one main thing, but trust me, if I meet somebody and they're like, hi, invest in my business and I go to them, okay. Um, like, yeah, I'm going to a cryptocurrency thing and they're like, what's cryptocurrency? I automatically go, this person's not curious. They don't have an openness to new experience. They're not well read. They're not interested and curious in what's going on in the world. And I go, I'm less likely to do business with them. So each of you, you gotta ask yourself, like, are you becoming sophisticated? Because if you're not, you're gonna go left behind in this world to other people who are gonna take the time to learn stuff. And the problem is everybody knows this, but they think of it old school, they go, well, that's why you go to college, because in college you get a humanities degree, or you get a broad, you know, based experience, and you learn about Egyptian history, and you learn about a little bit about economics and all that. And all that was good, kind of in the 16, 17, 18, 1900s, when the university system was created and at its peak. But the problem now, there's a great book by Stephen Johnson where great ideas come from. The speed with which the world's changing is too fast for these old school curriculums to keep up with them. Like, trust me, they're teaching stuff. I've been, I mean, I, go to high schools and look at what they're teaching people. They're teaching people stuff from five years ago. Well, guess what? You know how fast the world, I read a book on social media marketing and it was like put out like a year ago and it was like how to use Meerkat to grow your audience using live streaming. And I was like, Meerkat no longer exists. They had a whole third of the book. That's how fast the world changes. By the time you write the book, it's outdated. That's why, by the way, I do video courses. Because if something gets outdated, we delete it and upload a new video the same day. That's on track. You can't do that with old school textbooks. Textbooks, you know how much money is in the textbook game? It's almost a scam. These textbooks cost two to $500. It costs them like 20 bucks to make the book. And I'm all for people making a profit, but they have a monopolistic scam. That's a scam, you know? That's why I like these video courses and these test groups that I create, because I don't have to charge you $500 per class, per textbook. I can, put a, I can charge you $500 for the whole curriculum. That's half the price of freaking a community college degree. So I hope that each of you is like, I hope you get it. And at the core of everything I've said, I want you to look deep within yourself and go like, do I get it? Because I can't tell you how many people I talk to and I just like, I'm just like, they don't get it. They're like still, that's what I mean. For those of you, those of you who like the movie, The Matrix, like I'm like, they are so caught up on the wrong side of things that they think they see reality and they look out into the world, but they're seeing it like with sunglasses on, so it's too dark. Plato, the philosopher, he, he wrote a, an allegory, a story called The Cave, and he said most people are, this was a version of The Matrix written 2,000 years ago by Plato, more, it's more accurate than Matrix. He said most people are like in a cave, and they're in the very back of the cave. They're so far back it's completely dark, so they light a fire, and the fire puts their reflection shadows on the wall. And they're looking at the wall and they're going, oh, that's what a human looks like, that shadow. But they're not seeing the full human, they're seeing a shadow of the human. So Plato said, you have to start walking to the edge of the cave, to the light. And he said, the problem is when you first go to the light, it's too bright, it hurts your eyes. You're like, oh, I don't wanna go there. So you go back into the darkness because the light is too painful, the truth is too painful. And that's society we live in. If you bring people the truth, 
they go, ah, no, no, I want to go back to my old lies. I want to go to the old myths. And they go back deep into the cave and they sit there and they go, look, that's what I look like. I'm this dark shadow. They can't see any features. They can't see any details. It's just the shadow. And that's what happens financially. People think they understand the world. They're like, okay, I'm going to invest just in my 401k. I'm gonna do they don't even know what a 401k stands for. They don't even know that's a section of tax code. No one told them. They don't know what a Roth IRA, uh, Roth IRA are. They don't know what crummy powers are. They think crummy means like somebody sucks. That's a financial term. Crummy powers. That'll have to do with life insurance. When you die, you have to understand. Now, not everybody here has to know everything about finance. Not everybody's going to know. I don't know everything, but you must be sophisticated. And so I want you to look deep within yourself and go, am I willing to be committed to the game of financial planning in my life, to the game of investing, to the game of making money make money, or am I not? And if you're not, you're going to go way back in that cave and you're going to see darkness and you're going to go, well, I'm working hard. Well, the average job gives a 3% raise per year. That means every 25 years, you'll double your income. If you're okay with that, if you're okay with getting a job at 25 or 30 and you'll double your income at 50, be my guest. Be my guest. You'll go, the average person makes 52 grand a year by the time you, 25 years from now, at the average raise rate that you get from working hard at a job, you will be making six figures in 25 years. And some people I pulled out of this darkness, not me, but the stuff I've been able to point people to. It's not me. I'm pointing them to the light at the edge of the cave. I've done it, like I said, did my test group one year ago. I like it. It's literally almost one year to date. Jaden Gross never had a bank account, went from zero dollars in a bank account, sent me a screenshot of his bank account with 32,000 in it, now made one million dollars gross in his first year. Jose is a guy who got in that same program. He's making, I think, 60 grand a month. You guys saw yesterday on my Snapchat, Samir and Juan. Two years ago, they started following my stuff, came to a conference at the Roosevelt in Hollywood. They're now making, on a low month, $75,000 a month drop shipping, and they, their peak month was 220000 I posted a, screen, uh, a Snapchat video at my last conference in Santa Monica. A man brought his two sons. One of them's 15 and one of them's, I don't know, 20 or 19. Show me a screenshot of their Shopify page, $500,000 they made this year already at 15, okay? Now, I'm not promising everybody's gonna do that. It's not a get rich quick thing. It's not buy my program and make 500,000 a year. What I'm telling you is look at the light. People are doing it. These aren't make-believe stories. 1994 is when online selling began. Amazon, 1994. That's over 20 years ago. Get with the program. If you think it's a scam, it's been 20 years, people, 20 years, and you're still not on the train. You got to know how to create cash flow, and you have to know how to invest cash flow. That's the game of money. You have to know how to create it, and you have to know how to grow it. And I've done a lot of programs on how to create it. Some of them are closed now. Some of you have already got in. I want some of you to get in the one how to grow it. And let me just tell you this before I put up the link for the test group. I want to, I'll tell you what you're going to get. I got bonuses for you, all this stuff. But I want to tell you, this is the exact reason. I wasn't going to make a course like this because the subject of investing is tricky. People misunderstand you. They go, oh, I put all my money in Bitcoin and now I lost it and they're mad at you. So I've been always apprehensive about doing an investment course. But one of my students, I'm not going to say his name, came to my house a month ago. He got in my program, he learned how to create cash flow. He created 200,000 in his bank account of cash, investable assets that he could invest after all his expenses were paid off. And he said, yeah, Ty, I just invested. I just wired the 200 grand to some guys, I think in Florida, for some investment deal that they told me is guaranteed to make me money. So I said, tell me a little more about the deal. And he started talking about it and I went, oh my God. I just showed somebody you how to create a business and make 200 grand. And in one year, they've now squandered it because I guarantee you that money that they put in was a mistake. I can tell when a deal is a bad deal just by listening. I've done enough deals, been around investment enough. I had a financial wealth management company at 6,000 clients in 40 states, managed like 100 million bucks. I've been around the game of investments and I was like, 
Oh no, I told him, see if you can get your wire back. But once you send a wire, boy, you wire money to somebody, they can't get it back. It's not like a credit card where you can call the credit card company and go get my money back. 200 grand, so I said to him, I literally said, dude, I gotta make a course on how to invest your money. I'm showing people how to make money and they're just like making it and just throwing it away in the world most harebrained, stupid ideas I've ever heard. Like it was such a bad idea. But I realized I forgot to make the test group have how to grow the money that you make. That's what I'm talking about and giving you access today in this test group. I'm gonna give you access to a group that is going to show you, you will be, if you get in, I'm gonna put a link up in a second. So let me pull, I'm gonna swap out boards because I wrote out what you're about to get access to. Let me just have that board, you don't even need to flip it. Oops. Yeah, let's keep it right here. So here's some of the things, for those of you who click the link, I don't think I have the link up, what you're gonna get access to, okay? 23 things, we can call them wealth creation strategies, 23 strategies to invest. We talk about real estate, stock option, cryptocurrency, private business, forex, day trading, business flipping, buying and flipping stuff like cars. You could swap out anything for that, but cars I just put. Sports teams. Some of you are gonna make enough money, you're gonna buy a sports team. And this last year I was with Mark Cuban, bought a sports team. Now this, of course, comes later, but I thought I'd put a cool lesson in there because I wanna buy a sports team one day, so. It's kind of fun. This is not a beginner strategy. We're talking about mutual funds, 401k, Roth, R Roths. We'll be talking about uh, traditional IRAs. We're talking about cryptocurrencies and alternative cryptocurrencies, like I told you, like Litecoin and Ripple and all that stuff. We're talking about high yield lending. We're talking about commercial real estate, credit card points. There's a guy who's I'm flying in next week who literally took credit cards and made uh, got 25 million points by flipping credit cards back and forth. I thought it was a funny, cool strategy. So I'll throw in some things, loyalty points, ICOs, what to do with savings account, gold, silver, bond, oil, leverage buyouts, stamps, coins, hedge funds, annuities, life insurance. There's even more, but that's all I can fit on the page. So you're about to get password protected access. For those of you who get in my test group, you'll go on your phone or your laptop, you put in, we we'll send you a special website, special link, special email and password uh, combination. It's only for you. If you share it with multiple people, it'll lock you all out. So don't share it, okay? If they wanna get in, they can get in right now. And uh, yeah, so they basically, you go, I recommend three days a, month, a week, three days a week, three days a week, you log in and spend 15 to 30 minutes listening or watching the videos. You'll have the choice audio if you're in the car or on the treadmill, or you can watch them, uh, just watch them video. You can do it on your laptop, you can throw it up on a big screen if you want to. Sit back, lie back, let the information be absorbed. It'll be very specific. It'll be either me teaching or somebody who's a business partner, affiliate, team member, who's an expert in that area. I'm not an expert on every one of these things by any means, no one is. There's never one person in the world who can teach all 23 strategies, it just doesn't exist. If somebody tells you they're good at 23 things, run for your life. It's like somebody telling you they can be a pro basketball player, pro soccer player, pro football player, pro hockey player, pro golf player, pro cricket player, pro professional swimmer, shot put and javelin. Nobody is good at it. I think the best you've ever seen is maybe somebody good at two or three sports like Bo Jackson or one of these guys. Even Michael Jordan who's good at basketball, the greatest maybe ever, he wasn't so good at baseball. So I'm bringing in highly specialized people from around the globe who have a track record. They're not just professors, they've actually made money. In fact, I'm trying to get a guy to come teach. He made so much money he left the United States, renounced his US citizenship, he trades cryptocurrencies like 100 to 200 million dollars a year worth. It's insane. I have, I, he might be a billionaire now. He was just here, he was actually on my Snapchat uh, when I did that cryptocurrency mastermind a month or two ago. He flew in on his jet. He, by the way, is the guy who gave me my contact to get all my cars, because he has tons of Lambos and Ferraris and all that stuff. So, he, I'm gonna try to get him, I, no guarantee that I can get him to teach, but he's, he's a badass. Now, so that's the core program. 
There'll be 23 classes, each of them full of lessons. You can watch some of them or all of them. If you're not interested in oil, skip the class, okay? There's no, it's, it's, this is not junior high where you like are forced to go from class to class. I don't force anybody to do anything, okay? So for each of you, you can decide what you wanna learn. I recommend at least check out all of them. Maybe not buy a sports team unless you already got some money, okay? Now, the next thing, this is the key thing. I realize for some of you, this is not enough because some of you need more to be, maybe you don't have much money to invest or you don't have the confidence or you're worried. What if you lose your money? Remember, your investable amount is only the amount you can lose without having a heart attack. It's like Vegas money, okay? So I wanted to show you a couple things that are these top two, uh, sorry, this number one and number five bonus. So first thing is I'm gonna do a bonus, okay? You can buy this separately for two grand if you want to or I'm gonna give it to you for free. And that, not only will you get access to the recorded classes, but once a month for three months, it's a three month program, I will personally get on the phone live and mentor you in, a, in the small group setting. It's small enough, I've done this before, that basically I can answer 99% of questions, okay? So if you want me personally involved, uh, this is your best chance, okay? Now, I'm not going to do it once. People are like, can you do it once a day? I'm like, no, I'm busy, but I can do it once a month. I'll commit to. All right. So three months, not only will you get the guided program on your phone or your laptop, but you'll also have the ability to ask me questions. So people really, I never done this before. I started doing this a little bit three months ago and people really liked it. It was like the most popular thing I've ever done. And so I'm gonna extend that offer to you now. By the way, there should be a button below or above. If you don't see the button, that's okay. I'm gonna give you guys uh, a link that you can go to in a second, a special link, okay? Um, but you can, if you want to, uh, just wait a second, and I want you to understand this. Okay, that's the first. But here's something almost as important. Number five, free bonus. Okay, this normally is $500. That's how much everybody's paid to it. It's a program that I created earlier in the year, but it's closed now. Okay, it was a group, a test group, and then I close it. It's called Entrepreneur Starter Kit. It's how to start creating cash flow, part-time or full-time, with a small business or large if you want. You can do it from home. You can open an office if you want, but you can do it with almost no cash. So basically, this entrepreneur, the full Entrepreneur Starter Kit I'm telling you, it's a game changer because I brought, not only are you gonna get 23 investment strategies, but you're gonna get 10 or 20, I think it's what, 12 different business, exact templates, how to start these businesses. I brought in my buddy who has a t-shirt company. He makes $200,000 a month selling t-shirts with Facebook ads. He's gonna give you his exact formula. Who wants to steal his exact formula? You don't have to, he's gonna give it to you. If you don't see a button yet, don't freak out, be patient. I never am too pushy with sales because I want the, only the truly interested people, only the truly interested people to get in this. I'm not trying to get as maximum amount of money as I can. So you're gonna get access to these two. Number two, I'm gonna give you something that we created. They're monthly action plans to help you stay focused. So you'll literally have like a step-by-step -step focus plan so you can wake up in the morning and go like, all right, that's what I do. That's what I do, almost like you know a task checklist, a motivation list created for you, okay? Super valuable. By the way, let me, let me give you a link right here. Take this. So let me put a link up just in case you don't see the button. If right now you go to this exact, you can close the live call you go to tylopez.com slash invest now, all lowercase, all one word. Take the two words, stick them together, invest now. Ty, my website, tylopez.com slash invest now. I'm gonna start reading off the names of people who are jumping in the test group. This test group, by the way, hasn't even been open for 24 hours. It's kind of cool. I read off the first person to get in 
So I'll be, I have right here on my phone, I get real-time alerts. I send them to one of my junk email accounts, <laughs> my Yahoo accounts. So this is Yahoo Mail. I'll be reading off the names of people who get in. Now, one thing you'll see, I'll go back in a second so that you guys can see the bonuses over 15 bon or over 14 bonuses, I think it's 15. One of the things you're gonna get access to that's super important is 100% money back guarantee. So let's say you're having a heart attack and you're like, what if this doesn't work for me? Um, then you just get your money back. There you go. I don't know how to make it simpler than that. Sometimes I'm like, I need a more sophisticated way to say that. I'm like, nah, you don't have to be a slick salesman. You can just say the truth. TyLopez.com slash invest now. Let me make sure the link works. Always double check your work. It should work. Make sure it's all lowercase and no uh, spacing issues. Sometimes we crash it. I remember the first time I ever did one like this, I crashed my entire, I think it crashed the website, literally. It's not loading. Can you call up Rob? That's okay. My web, it crashed my website. We get a lot of people trying to get in. So for some of you, usually the way these crashes work, some of you can see it, some of you can't. But it crashed for me. By the way, it's not a big deal. I'm happy <laughs> if, if it's crashed, because then only the true people will stay around and wait for it. It'll probably take us a few minutes to get back up, hopefully. So good. Let's talk about questions that you have. Oh, I haven't shown you all the bonuses. So if it's crashed, there's too many people hitting it. So just hold on a second, please. If it works for you, go ahead and jump in. Okay, monthly action plans. Number three, very important. Kind of like a private Facebook group, I've created what I call a tribe. All the, uh, you'll be able to network and talk and ask questions like a private Facebook group, but on my website, and you'll be able to talk to everybody in the group, okay, everybody in the group on how, like specific questions, like, oh, what are you seeing in Bitcoin? What are you seeing in gold? What are you seeing in flipping business? What are your thoughts on oil? So this is important. Normally you'd have to pay 500 bucks for access to that. You're gonna get three months access during the whole program to the private tri tribe. So if you have a question in the middle of the night and I'm not there, you can ask it and the group can help answer too. So that's really cool. I built that software about six months ago and it's helped a lot of people. Okay, when you get in, we're gonna have a one-on-one -on -one strategy consultation call. If you want my team, so I've traded, trained six people in my company six of them, to uh, basically create a custom plan. So they will, you'll see when you get in the, t when you click the link, okay, you click the link and you go to the, the test group, the checkout page, and you get in, the first thing, one of the first things you'll see is a call scheduler. You put in the best time to call you and my strategy team, they will call you and um, they will basically help you create a plan. So you might have a, some special circumstances Oh, well I have this or this, I'm 18 or I'm 80 years old and I, and they will help create a custom strategy. So instead of having to pay 297 for that call, if you get in now, if you get in now, I'm gonna waive that fee. It's kind of like a scholarship. All these things I'm giving you as a free scholarship. You can come back and pay them later if you want to. Okay, next, um, we already did number five. Number six, I brought in a guy, a friend of mine, Dan Fleischman, He's the youngest guy in history to create a publicly traded company, okay? And he's gonna teach you what he did. If you can create a publicly traded company, you would be amazed at how much money you can make because of the liquidity. So I got him to teach a course specifically on how you can get started even if you don't have much money, okay? Dan Fleischman, he's a cool guy. He created, a, his first business was an energy drink company. He sold it. Then he took the money, flipped it, inve now he's an investor. He, we'll talk a little bit, one of the strategies on being a, an angel investor, he's an angel investor, he invests a little bit of money in a lot of places. And he also um, started an online poker company and built one of the top, whatever, 10 po online poker companies in the world, sold that, did all that stuff. So he'll be teaching you. 
how to negotiate to gain competitive uh, advantage with the former head of the FBI hostage negotiation team. Look, to make money, to be an investor, to be a business person, to create cash flow, you gotta know how to negotiate. You have to know how to talk to people. You have to know how to pitch. I brought in somebody, literally, in a life or death situation, they send him to negotiate with people who have guns to somebody's head. That's who you wanna lurk for. That's who you wanna learn from. Trust me. You don't wanna learn from somebody who's like, oh, well, I did one deal in my life. Imagine a life or death situation. That's how good he is. Okay, I think the site is up, somebody said. For those of you crashing the site, I guess it's a good problem for me to have, crashing the site. Did they say it's up? Try it. What did Rob say? Show me on your phone. What do you think? That doesn't happen very often. Whenever I launch these new test groups, people go wild. I think it's because I put it up on my Snapchat. I announced I'd be doing this later. Come in here. Let me see. I think, is the whole site down? Let me look. The first hour it was working because I tested it, but something happened. I don't well, know. that's what happens when a lot of people come on at once, my friend. Okay, there we go. Yeah, it's just my test group that crashed. That's interesting. <laughs> That's cool. Okay, this happens once or twice a year when I launch these new little groups, um, but it'll be back up, hopefully. One time years ago, I had a business and the site crashed and it took seven days to get my site back up. And I was making with that website anywhere from like 15 to $30,000 a day. So I literally, um, is the, let me tell you what I did that I recommend nobody ever do. I stayed up almost for seven days straight. And then it, we got it up and then it kind of crashed again. A total of 14 days. About seven of them where I only slept maybe two hours a day at the maximum. And then the last seven days I slept a little more. But I'd say in 14 days I probably slept like 20 hours or something like that. Dude, I'm pretty sure it took me two years to recover from that. Do not do that, okay? So, uh, yeah, that was when I lived in my other house. That was like in 2000 probably 12 nightmare but whatever this is a hopefully a different hopefully this is not that because that was one of the most annoying days of my life weeks of my life i told my guys like dude we got to build infrastructure that never that never happens again so now we've gone a while without any site going down but it happens okay how to be a business networker i think the best business networking person I've ever met is my business partner, James Swanick. We used to not be business partners, but I have so much respect for him, especially around, look, I take this guy everywhere. If I was, like, last time I was at Golden Globes, I said, James, there's Elon Musk. Can you go get him so I can record, I can interview him on my phone? Five minutes later, here he comes walking up with Elon Musk. I've seen it. Slow, but it eventually is oh, I think it's working now. We're gonna, oh yeah. It's un, I think it's uncrashed now. I'm putting it in tylopez.com slash invest. It might be loading slowly. That was real slow. Oh, here it goes. Yeah, it's just loading slowly. So good, we kind of got it under control. Whew, it's about 14 days. Whew, it's about 14 minutes. Okay, I'm gonna start reading off names of people who are getting in. So my business partner, we're now business partners in a sleep company called Swanick Sleep, specializes in tools to help you sleep better. You can't believe how many people on this planet have crappy sleep. Last night, dude, I got eight hours of sleep, good sleep. Whatever you do, figure out how to sleep, man. And somebody say you need to use Cloudflare. We use all those tools. That, that wasn't the issue. Um, how to be a business networker. I want you to learn how to network. One of the biggest tools, if you want to be an investor, if you want to make money, it's not just what you know, it's who you know. That old cliche is so true that it's going to blow your mind. It's not what you know. 
I can't tell you how many people I know who know a lot of stuff who never make more than 50 grand a year, never make more than 100 grand a year. Okay, next. That's only, by the way, that's a $100 bonus you're gonna get for free. If you add all this, add all this up, what does all this add up to, Armin? Okay, by the way, I talked to you about this t-shirt thing, how to start an on-demand t-shirt business. I know two guys, one of them makes $200,000 a month, he'll be the one teaching. One of my other friends, I was just, he was just on my Snapchat when I was in San Francisco last week. He is making 1.5 million on Facebook ads. He was spending about a million on advertising, netting, a uh, million in advertising and the t-shirts, netting 500,000 a month. Pretty good, right? Number 10, we'll be talking about one of my lead students, Jaden Gross, will be showing you how I trained him to start a social media marketing agency. He made a million bucks in the first year, starting with literally zero startup capital. He had just enough money to get in my test group. Yeah, Justin Senior, the other guy. We'll be talking about how to build an app. Apps are powerful. I told you my business partner has the number three highest grossing app of all time. It's like up there with Pandora, okay? So you wanna learn how to build an app? I've got him, I've got uh, these two young kids that teach it, they're like 18 years old, and they usually always have one app in the top 30. They did the damn Daniel app. They do all these little goofy apps, but they make money. Now they don't make a couple hundred million bucks a year, but they make, they'll make like 20 grand a month for a while while their app is hot, but they know how to build apps fast, okay? That's a hundred dollar court, you're gonna get that free. All right, how to scale your businesses. Some of you are already making money. You wanna learn how to invest, but you're not scaling, meaning you're not growing. Let me show you some tools and techniques. I've scaled businesses um, from zero to a million dollar a uh, year business, seven figures in three days. That's the fastest I ever took a brand new business. Mentorbox is a company that I own 50-50. Uh, with Alex and it took me three days to scale it from zero customers to one million dollars a year in recurring income over 100 grand a month took three days that means people signed up to pay monthly so it wasn't just a, a hundred grand one month it was lo they're locked in you know okay so yeah Armin just added this up it's six thousand four hundred and fifty five dollars worth of bonuses that you're getting, I'm giving you a scholarship on those, zero. You can, trust me, you can come back and buy these separate, $6,455, okay? Next, how to build a successful drop shipping business. I told you, Samir, Juan, uh, I, uh, Ekim, he's flying out from Europe. Ekim's doing $200,000 a month. Created drop shipping uh, technique. People selling clothes, people, people selling bras. I'm, let me show you something. Drop shipping, if you wonder, do, do we know anything about drop shipping? Here's something I'll show you. This is not a screenshot either. Watch this. Oh man, hold on. I gotta log back in to my Stripe. I'll show you a Stripe account. Give me one second. I accidentally didn't put my f f finger on it, right? Stripe you can set up where you can password protect it with your thumbprint. All right, here we go. I'm logging in and here we go. This is cool. I wanna show you this. By the way, this is not a screenshot. For those of you who are like, oh, is this real? I'm gonna show you. All right. Here we go. This is not a screenshot. I'll show you. I press Stripe on my phone. You see, this is selling books and book related stuff. 22,511 and 50 cents. In the last 30 days, that's one month I set it to, $641,000, okay? So you wanna learn how to, that's drop shipping, simple household items. Here's another company I have, a smaller one, with a gut with, I'm a 33% owner, made $1,200 today. That's shipping glasses, sleep supplements, stuff like that. The Amazon is about triple that. That company's made about 5,000. So, very important that each of you learns how to sell simple household items. It's the quickest way to create cash flow, so then you can invest it in the stuff you're gonna learn. How to build your brand story, this is part of this. You gotta know how to brand. People gotta know how to brand. If you don't know how to brand, you don't create ongoing revenue. You always have to advertise for new customers. Once you create a brand, think about this, Harry Potter movies. 
Do you think they have to spend a lot of money for the new Harry Potter movie to advertise it? No, it goes viral, it goes word of mouth, they have a strong brand, and each movie creates a billion dollars of revenue, and they can probably, they spend under 100 million on advertising, trust me. Well, let's say they spend 100 million, but they make a billion back, not bad, right? 10X their money in under three years. So all this, the final bonus, I told you, you're gonna have the money back guarantee. You got 60 days, 60 days. So you can try it for one day, two days. It's not like a one hour money back guarantee. By the way, that's 100% money back guarantee. It's not like you'll get a pro rata proportional that you get it all back if you don't like it. So if you go through the program, you're like, wait, this didn't teach me about investing. Wait, this didn't help me, this was stupid. Then you could send an email, you can call in. I got an office, I got 50 employees here in Los Angeles. It's not some you know, company offshore or something weird like that. It's a real office, people come in, they got nine to five job, they'll look and we press one button and we can refund all your money. So, questions. So I'm gonna put the link back up. Oh, here we go. Oh, let's talk about how much it is. Important question. So here's how I decided to do this. Simplest thing ever. I want it to be fair and not too expensive for you, but I also don't wanna be like giving out $10,000 worth of value for three cents, okay? That would be stupid too. Never overprice or underprice. Never be too greedy, but never be taken advantage of. Because sometimes, trust me, people will tell you, ever had a friend who you do everything for them, you pay for food, you do all this, they never pick up the bill? It's not fair. Life, you should never exploit people, but never allow them to exploit you back. It should just be fair. Justice, man, that's how the world goes. So right now, if you go get a community college class, uh, in Los Angeles, here in Los Angeles County, it's a thousand bucks for a quarter, right? So it's three months, it's a thousand bucks. So here, I'll put it to you this way. If you don't think this is gonna teach you more than you'll learn in a community college class, and you're learning from people who have made hundreds of millions, billions of dollars online, billion. Me and my business partner, he's made his last business in the last 10 years did a billion dollars in revenue, okay? Between me and him, we spent $600 million on adverti online advertising on the internet game. So you find any community college professor that knows that, and I'll give you your money back. Seriously. So someone said, is the money back guarantee on your website? Yes, it's there. Yeah, and trust me, we've been doing this a long time, so we have a relationship with Visa and MasterCard. We would never wanna mess that up, because they get mad if you don't give refunds. So, um, yeah, you go to tylopez.com slash invest now, one word. We crashed it when I showed this link, but you good. And then you click, uh, you'll see a simple page, nothing complicated, but it's 256 bit SSL encrypted, so nobody can steal your credit card number. We don't see your number, it doesn't pop up on my phone. You know, when you hand your credit card to someone at Starbucks or Walmart, they can just go back and take a picture of your phone and have your credit card imprint or they have imprint machines if they really, we don't do that. You control the card, it's very safe. Let me read off some people, I'm sure somebody's gotten in. Let's go, here we go, Spencer Young, right here. Spencer, congratulations, Pennsylvania. Now, one thing I'm gonna do, so it's under a thousand bucks if you pay at one time. For those of you who don't have any money or very little money, I'll also give you a four pay option. It's four pay or three pay? Four pay. So you have a four pay option. That will lower the price massively. So it's not even, if you don't have, you know, a thousand bucks, you can still get in. If you don't even have 500 bucks, you can still get in. That's the beauty of this, okay? Now, if you do the four pay, you pay a little bit more money, but so it's better to do the full pay. Like I said, Spencer Young, but I put that option to divide it up if that's better for you. Okay, next person. Okay, Rigo Berto Paredes, your card was declined. You're in California. If your card's declined, a lot of times it's just the bank. You can just go back, it's not a big deal. Matthew Webster, where are you at? Ontario, Canada, cool. Matthew Luffman, congratulations. Ooh, Australian, Matthew Luffman. 
you post it to the thing. Yeah, I posted it starting again. All right, what else? Who else we got? Jeremy Bene on a card decline. Room Zui Rune Lim from Wilaya Persekatuan. Wow, I don't know what state that is. That sounds like Malaysia or something. Congratulations. Jude Rabanal Jr., congratulations. Did the full play, you're in California, awesome. Eddie Ortiz, congratulations. By the way, you can upload a picture after you get in the site, and uh, it's kind of cool, then I can see who you are. I like being able to see the people, sometimes people do. What do we got next? Janice, Jethro Roth Kushel. That is a very interesting name, Jethro. What's up, man? You're in California. Devan Ivanovich. Oh no, that was for a different product, sorry. That's for my social media marketing thing. Justin Baxter, Georgia. Congratulations, we need to add the age to show on here. It's kind of cool to be able to see more details. Jocelyn V. Primus, congratulations, you're in Georgia. I don't know if you're in Atlanta or not. Grudy Rodriguez, Florida. So we've had Australia, pretty sure we had Malaysia, we've had Canada, we've had Europe, I think the time changed, it's the middle of the night. All you Europeans are sleeping. You're missing this. All right, what questions do we have? All right, let me go over some common questions that I see people have that gets people kind of messed up, okay? Some people ask, most common question, tylopez.com, right here, go to this link, jump on in. Okay. Most common question I would say is, good Ty, this worked for you, will this work for me? So you might have a special situation. You might be super young, super old, super poor. You might live far off. You might be close, like there's some apprehension. I got good news for you. The good news is, um, I don't, the making money online and investing money is primarily a faceless game, meaning nobody sees you. So cryptocurrency, you don't see pictures of the people. So you don't discriminate if they're black, white, young, you know, woman, there's no, it's faceless. Investing, if you learn day trading, if you learn Forex, if you learn gold, if you even flipping businesses a lot of times, you might meet the person. It's not the 1500s anymore where everything's done face to face. So if you're young, if you're old, if you're ugly, if you're tall, if you're short, if you're good looking, you don't have the advantage. It's what you know in your head. So will this work for you? Well, it's a machine. Investing is a machine. If you own Bitcoin right now, one Bitcoin is worth over $7,000. The bit, if you go to sell it on the trading market, it doesn't call you up and go, all right, let's talk for a second. I found out you were 19 and you're a female and you're black and you live in Malaysia. I'm not sure I'm gonna give you your $7,200 back. It's a commodity. It just, it gets sent to you. If you invest in the stock market, nobody's looking. So I think it's important that everybody here um, truly understand how the world has changed. And it's more on you to succeed. Now you might say, but Ty, I've done things like this and I lose motivation. Who here has ever procrastinated? Say something on the live chat. Well, guess what? The whole reason I created this program and the reason that every three, uh, that once a month for three months, I'll be personally mentoring you on these live group calls is because that'll keep you motivated. One of the number one reasons people procrastinate is they do things alone. For example, if you're not in good shape, the best thing you can do to get in better shape, if you're not good at going to the gym, if you're not good at working out, if you're not good at jogging or running or jujitsu or weights or whatever it is, best thing you can do, best thing you can do is get a training partner whether it's a personal trainer or a friend. Because then when you wake up in the morning, you don't feel like doing it, they're knocking on your door like, yo, I'm here, let's go to the gym. When it comes to becoming an investor, when it comes to learning about money, launching a business, why do you think I have business partners? I've had 13 
Now Alex is my 14th business partner, if I count correctly, something like that. 14 business partners. I've had great experiences with all 14 of them. And now that doesn't always happen. I've been lucky, but here's the cool thing about having 14 business partners. I don't procrastinate because when I don't feel good, they feel good. And when they're down, I'm up. When they're burnt out, I'm probably not. So you're now gonna come into a community, you're gonna get access to the tribe, okay? So you don't feel good, you feel discouraged, you're lost, boom, there's somebody else there who's feeling good that sends you a screenshot and goes, yo, look what I'm doing. Look what I'm doing, guys. And then you, you're up again. Like, that's a game changer. That's why I never train alone. Like, I do jujitsu. I do jujitsu with the Gracies and Machado. Higa Machado trains me. You know, he's a coral belt, like, kind of like a red belt. Like, you think I'm just going to go and just go roll on my own? I do boxing with a freaking trainer. You know why? Because when I don't feel like doing it, he's like, dude, come on, let's go a little harder. Let's go a little harder. I want you to be like that. And that's why I created this group like that. So if you don't feel like you're motivated, you're worried about procrastination, this program, this test group, I've been doing these test groups for over one year. I'm sorry, for over two and a half years. I think the first test group I created was for the 67 steps. It was July, if I remember correctly, July 2014. I think it was July 25th. I remember it was like the last week of July. Okay? And that changed my life. Because I realized if you create a focused, concentrated group, you can help other people. Because before, I was just doing businesses on my own and making money on my own. People were like, oh, Ty, you only make money teaching people how to make money. Not true. Over a decade ago, I was probably making 100 grand a week. I make more money now because I'm older and more experienced. But do you consider that jump change? Probably in two, maybe a little less than 10 years ago. I would say, I, sh I suck at years and dates, but let's just say I was making, uh, I was making at least 100 grand a week, eight to 10 years ago, way before I had Instagram, way before I had, I had my first Ferrari in either 08 or 09. I didn't post it on social media. People go, oh, this dude just got a car so he can show off to other people. No, I didn't. I had a car and didn't post it on social media for five years. Does that make sense? So it's very important that each of you go, maybe there's something here that I can learn. Maybe there's something here that I can learn. And some of you can't learn anything. Some of you already know more than me. Don't go in the program. This program's for people who want to learn. If you already know more than me, then hey, shoot me an email. You can come teach. I love to be around people who are smarter than me. Trust me, guys. Get around people who are smarter than you. If you are smarter than me at, at a cryptocurrency alternative coin, if you're smarter than me at investing in gold, email me. Email my office. Please. I want to be your ally. But I promise you this. For example, you ain't spend more money on internet marketing than me and my business partner unless you spent more than 600 million bucks. So maybe we can teach you a thing or two about that. You know, we talk about you're going to get free access to how to build an app. I guarantee you haven't made more money with apps than Alex, who was standing right here a second ago, because he's number three. Unless you got number one or number two, he's beat you. And so learn from him. I learn from him. Never be so cocky that you're like, well, I already know everything. No, you don't. Nobody knows everything. At best, you can be highly specialized in one, maybe two things. Even Bill Gates only done two things. Microsoft and the Bill Gates Foundation. Now, you have sub-projects underneath that, but the core focus has to come from multiple people training you. And that's why these test groups are game changers. Okay, number three. Can I trust the guarantee? Let's face it. We live in a cynical world. Some people go, well, you say it's guaranteed, but it's not. Good news for you. The guarantee is backed by, Ama uh, by Visa, and MasterCard, multi-billion dollar companies. Meaning, if you want a refund, I can't stop it. So that's why I said, call my office, we refund it. There's never, in the last two and a half years, there's never been a person who wanted a refund that we didn't give it to. 
It's impossible. It's backed by, you think I can call a visa and be like, don't give Bob their refund. No, no. When you pay with credit card, this is why I said, be careful of wiring money. Remember I told you one of my students saved up 200 grand from his business, cash, and wired it to somebody? When you wire money and somebody tells you you have a refund, if they lie to you, there's nothing you can do. Call up your bank, call up Citibank, call up Bank of America, call up HSBC, be like, I wired somebody money, can you help me get my money back? Oh no, goodbye, you have lost your money. But buy something online. The other day, $30,000 was stolen from my credit card. All right. Um, <laughs> somebody says, Ty is in a hotel conference room at Motel 6. Uh, that's funny. That's a good, sometimes hater stuff. This is not a hotel conference room, but this is where I live in Beverly Hills. <laughs> For those of you who watch my Snapchat, you can see that. Every once in a while, you have to laugh at what people say. Anyway, somebody stole, I've had different times in my life. One time I had over 100 grand stolen in a bank account, and you have six months to find it. So literally five months into it, I was going through accounting, and I realized that um, this 100 grand had been stolen by scammers. And I called up Visa, and they're like, dude, you had like two weeks left, or else we can't, we can't refund it. So Visa and MasterCard, they back you for six months. So if I got hit by a nuclear bomb in Los Angeles, you wanted your money back, and I wasn't even on the planet, you have six months backing you with Visa and MasterCard. So that's how it works. So like I said, I don't allow people to wire money because I want it to be like, you can sleep good at night. You wire me money. And then if I get hit by a nuclear bomb or I die in a car crash and my staff is all gone and my office disappears, then you can't get your money back. So a little, little note to yourself, that's how the world works. You need to be financially sophisticated and understand that paying with credit cards is the safest thing that humans have ever been able to do. Ten, I'm just reading a book um, uh, on the true memoirs of Ulysses S. Grant. He was a president and a general in the, Spanish -American, the Mexican American War and the Civil War. And he, after he was a president, he went broke because he invested some money in some dumb schemes and he had zero back and there was no, but nowadays with Visa and MasterCard, he would have been able to get all his money back. He actually had to write the book the memoirs of Ulysses S. Grant because he was poor when he died after being the president. So next, common question. What if I don't have much money? So you go, Ty, I want to learn how to invest in gold in the stock market, and I want to learn how to invest in real estate, and I want to learn cryptocurrency and Bitcoin and gold and commodities and, and you know Forex and all that, but I don't have any money. Remember I said there's 15 bonuses? One of them, I told you pay close attention to bonus number one and bonus number five. Bonus number one is me personally mentoring you in the live calls uh, once a month for three months to keep you on track. And then the second bonus, which was number five, was the Entrepreneur Starter Kit. How to start a small part-time or full-time business from home, whether you already have a job, with, you know, when you don't have much cash, and how to rock and roll. Right? And how to create cash flow. Oops, sorry. And it's important you learn how to create cash flow. So that bonus number five, for those of you who have no money, that's gonna help you. And it's very critical that you answer that. Okay, questions that I did not put. By the way, if you're ready to rock and roll, let me read some more names. Let me put this link back up. Okay and there's a button below that you can click. So let me read some of the people getting in the program right now. Let's see who's getting in. Congratulations to, who's the next person? Eric Alvarez. He did the four pay option. Remember, there's two options. You can pay a little less and pay it all at once. You can see here, Eric Alvarez out of California paid the four pay. Next. Hector E. Nungare did the full pay, also out of California. I've got a lot of Californians follow me. David Piacara out of New Jersey. Congratulations, did the full pay. If you want to save money, do the full pay. If you don't have much money, you can do the four pay. Tubogus Ismail, that is an interesting name. 
from Jawa Tenga. All right, I gotta look where this is. These names are killing me. Jawa Tenga, where the heck is that? Huh, I told you, it's in Indonesia. That's the cool thing. We've got two people from either Malaysia or Indonesia get in because investing is blind. If you invest correctly, you could live in Timbuktu, Madagascar, you could live in you know, Northern Finland. The markets, it's good and bad news. The bad news is if you're stupid, the markets don't look at you and go, oh, you're only 18, we'll give you your money back. But, so that's the bad news. The good news is if you know what you're doing, you're sophisticated, it goes, you're 18, welcome to the world. My, one of my uh, mentors, he's more of a real estate mentor, but his original story when he was a teenager, he, back in the 1970s, insider trading was not illegal. In the 60s, I think it became illegal sometime in the 70s. So he had a mentor that would give him insider stock market tips, and this wasn't illegal. Now it's illegal. Do not do this. This is what Martha Stewart got in trouble for doing insider trading, but it used to not be illegal. So he was 16 years old in the 19, I think it was late 60s, early 70s. Just imagine this, making $100,000 a month. That's like making six hundred, seven hundred thousand dollars a month. His parents had such a heart attack because he'd have all this money and they didn't know where he got it from. So they basically did an intervention. He said he came home one day and his mom and dad and uncle and grandparents were there. And they're like, we've got because they thought he was um, selling drugs or something. I forget what they thought, thought he was doing, something illegal. So they're like, we found your bank records. You've got, you know a million dollars, you're 16 in high school, like, what are you doing? We're here for you, just confess to us, we'll help this. And he showed them all the ticker statements. So you, back then in the 60s and 70s, when you invest in the stock market, you get these ticker confirmations. Now you kind of get it, but it's all online. But he had these ones mailed in. So he showed it to them like, no man, I'm making money. So the beauty is, he's 16 years old. Now you can't do that technique, but guess what? The world changes and there's always some technique that works. So the technique that works today is not insider trading because then you go to jail. But in the 60s, the law was like, go ahead. So what happens is, you know, right now, Bitcoin's making a lot of money, but you mark my words. Something is always new and better around the corner. And Bitcoin might be too late. I mean, it would be, all I can say about Bitcoin is, you should have got in in 2010. I didn't get in in 2010. So I'm talking to myself. I'm not preaching at you. $100 in Bitcoin would have almost, you would almost be at $100 million today. Now you'd have to have the discipline to have held it. Most people, when 100 bucks went up to 1 million, would cash in. You had to have that discipline, and that's one of the things you're gonna learn in the program. How do you create the mental discipline? How do you know when to sell? There's a way to sell, hedge your bets. That's what Mark Cuban did. You could sell partial, make sure you get your principal back. There's some principles. You can do dollar cost averaging in and dollar, co dollar cost averaging out, by the way. So dollar, co dollar cost averaging in is a way to invest and get an average lower price over time. And dollar co averaging, uh, cost averaging out is a way to reduce volatility to get money out without having a heart attack. Oh, I sold all my Bitcoin in 2011. You know, you sell a little bit. So if you had a hundred bucks worth, you could sell 5% of it per year. And even today, you would still have $20 million, okay? And remember, Bitcoins, I, we're gonna talk about 23 strategies. The strategy that I love the most personally is flipping businesses, investing some money in business. I love, I mean, that plan is so powerful. And I like it because I did it, put $10,000 down, made 100,000 back within two weeks. Name something that'll do that. That's even, that's as good as Bitcoin. That's better because I had control over it. The only thing I don't like about Bitcoin and gold and commodities and oil in the stock market is you lose some control because you can't call up the New York Stock Exchange and go, yo, my stock is dropping, uh, halt the markets. No, they're, they're, it's a faceless market. Meaning they're like, who the hell are you? Chink. So what I like to have some passive businesses that are outside of my control, okay? And I like to have some businesses that are within my control. And when you can do both of those, you become a very powerful investor, okay? Car sales, it's a different program, great way to create cash flow. Daniel Matthews, where would you put 50 grand? Okay, good question. 
Let's talk about those of you, Daniel Matthews here on YouTube Live says he has $50,000. Okay. So you got 50 grand, Daniel. Let's just think about this in a pie chart. You have, now if you don't have 50 grand, just put whatever number you have here. So Daniel has $50,000. If you only have 500, put the number 500. You can draw this out if you want. Now, the way I think about it is I, you have a pie chart. The largest part of the pie chart right here should be reinvesting back into things that you understand the most. So let's just say this is the smallest part of the graph, the pie chart. You should put money in there that you're the least sure about the strategy. So let's say you have lots of questions. Like, let's say Bitcoin is new to you. Let's say gold is new to you. Let's say, you know, mutual funds are new to you. Let's say flipping businesses, you have a lot of questions about them. Put the least amount of money in there. Just common sense. I can't tell you how many people I tell this and they're like, wow, that makes sense. I'm like, what kind of world do we live in that people aren't being taught this common sense? If you don't know it, please don't put all your money in it. So then, what do you, so you put the money in things that you don't have many question marks. Maybe nobody's 100% sure of anything. So you put the most money in things. So for me, I put most of my money in online businesses. Because yes, I have some questions. I'm not perfect at online businesses, but I know more than I know investing in gold. I will not put most of my money in gold because I know a decent amount about gold, but I'm no world expert. When it comes to marketing online, I've been doing it since 2001, okay? I'm one of the OGs on the internet, especially with internet marketing. I was in Google AdWords the second month it existed. I was in Facebook beta program advertising. I was one of the first people doing YouTube ads. So I can still lose money. Nothing's 100% guaranteed. The definition of investment is something that can go up and down. But I don't have that many question marks. Over here, and I like to divide my money in three places, is a good strategy. So you're not gonna do all 23 of these strategies. I'm gonna give you the option to learn 23, then you can pick the ones you like. Then you do here things that you know a decent amount, but you're kind of uncertain, you put a little more money in. And that's just the smartest way to do it. So I continually put, you know, I was looking at my accounting in the last year, I put $7.5 million into this area, investing in, in online businesses that I understand, and I made 32 million back. This is like the last 18 months from one business. That's a good return. So I put seven million in of my own money, 90%, 99. I have a few investors, but not really. 99% of that was my own money. I put 7.5 million in and I made 32 million back. Roughly five, five X in under two years. It's not bad, okay? So here, I'm not gonna put seven million in something that I don't know that much about. And, and I can't tell you how many people, their pie graph of investing is backwards. Their friend says, ooh, Bitcoin is the next big thing. Ooh, investing in you know, uh, flipping oil uh, and gas leases is the best thing. I had a guy come to my house. He's an oil and gas salesman. He's like, dude, invest all this money in oil and gas. Well, I'm not gonna invest seven million in oil and gas because I've never done oil, I don't do oil and gas. There's these, these, basically these kind of partnership fractional things. But for some people, you might be from Texas, you might understand it, you should put more money in there. So, when you have 50 grand, let me add one thing. Do you know what the one thing each of you know better than anything? Yourself. You've been with yourself since day one, my friend. You have been with yourself since day one. More than any business partner, more than any Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, ETH uh, opportunity, you know yourself. So, where should you put the maximum money first? Maximum money should go into your own brain. Please, put the maximum. Now, that doesn't mean I would not put $7.5 million into learning because that's more than I could absorb, okay? 
but I spend about a hundred thousand dollars a month on training myself with, or, or with trainers, consultants, traveling, business networking, learning from other people. Easily a hundred thousand a month. Best investment I've ever made. Those of you who argue with that, you have, do know nothing about my story. I put a hundred thousand. Now, by the way, I'm underestimating. It's more than that. I just, when I put the real amount, people don't believe me. Okay? But it's a hundred thousand a month. Personal trainers physically, mentally, consultants, you know, going or out. In the last 20 days, I've been to 20 events. 20 events. Why? Well, I was up in San Francisco with Gil Pinchina, number one angel list investor of all time. He has 40 syndicates. So I got a jet. I charter jets. I don't own my own jet because I like chartering them. You don't have to depreciate and I can get smaller, big ones. Chartered a jet from Vegas. I said, Gil, want to go with me? Gil, not Al Pacino. <laughs> Pinchina. He's a legend in San Francisco. Boom. Flew to San Francisco. Took him with me. Talked the whole time. One hour on the plane. It's an uh, hour and 20 flight from Vegas to San Fran. I got an office up in San Fran. There. Went to a party the next night with the founder. Of, uh, so it was, it was a conference, a cryptocurrency conference for a guy, Joe Lubin, who's a billionaire, a crypto billionaire. So I was there. That trip cost me. And then I went back to Vegas to meet with a guy who's a Forbes list guy, had sushi dinner with him and listened to his story, how he went from zero dollars as a backpacker to selling his business for five billion cash. That's me investing in my brain. It's me investing in my brain. Those trips cost a lot of money. Took a whole group of people out. We got a, I went with uh, Calvin Harris. I don't know if you guys saw my Snapchat. I met with Calvin Harris before he DJed, number one DJ in the world, made over $50 million. He's the DJ at Omnia. It was funny, I went there and I went back in the room <laughs> to, for, to meet Calvin Harris and he goes, dude, I've been watching your YouTube videos for years. I've been trying to meet you. It was pretty hilarious. I was blown away. Kate was with me and she's like, that's so funny. Kate, uh, Calvin Harris wanted to talk to you. So that cost money. I bought a table because I had some business partners flying. I bought a table at Omnia. The table was $11,000. I didn't drink a drop of alcohol. 11,000, that's me investing in my own brain because you create partnerships and allies by people having fun with you. You think business networking, people think business networking is handing people a card. This is most people's eye. Please go through the bonus, those of you get in the test group. Get the bonus by James Swanick. Business networking is not walking up to people and going, I'm Ty, I'm Ty. You know what people do? They throw it away. <laughs> if people hand me business cards, nine times out of 10 times, I'm like, thank you for creating trash for me. Like, it, it does, what it, handing me a piece of paper means I want to connect with you? That's not business networking. They might have taught you that in, that's preschool level business. I want to teach you how to get a PhD in business. And so that costs money. So I mean, if you count all the stuff I do, oh, it's easy a million bucks a year. And sometimes I'm like, Ty, maybe you're spending too much money. But then I think about LeBron James. They just published an article on the, you know, number one basketball player in America, probably him. You know where he invests the most money? Back into himself. He spent over a million dollars on keeping in shape. That's why he's a machine, six foot eight, eight percent body fat, 270 pounds. There's never been a guy like LeBron James. But notice, he put the money in, he invested in himself. So if you have 50 grand, going back to the original, invest some of it into your own brain into courses, into programs, into conferences, into test groups like this, into books, into seminars. Man, I am all about continuing to learn. A perpetually, man, perpetually. It's very important you become a perpetual loser. I mean, a uh, winner, <laughs> not a loser. That was not a subliminal thing. <laughs> so I first invest in my brain, then I invest in what I know the most. Then secondarily in three. So it's really a four-way plan. Threes in investments outside of you, in you know, businesses or this and that. It's the simplest formula. Okay? Let's see who else is getting in the test group. Who we got? Who do we have? Dee Dee. I wonder if Tubagus Ismail. That guy, that is a cool name. I'm going to change my name to Tubagus. All right. Jorge Sanchez. Oh, look, he uploaded a picture. 
at UT Health in New Jersey. Cool. Cody, oh no, that's for a different program. That's for my book. Marcos. Marcos has no last name, just Marcos. Okay. Andrew Hammer. Pretty cool name. Are you related to Armin Hammer? Army Hammer? Florida. So, tylopez.com. Now, here's the deal. If you wait on this, if you wait, you're going to miss out on the bonuses. We're, this test group has a precise, it's a specific program tailored to give you over $6,500 worth of free bonuses. By the way, that's not a make-believe number. $6,500, that's what people have paid to get access to all that other stuff, okay? So you're getting the program for under 1,000, under 500 if you do the four pay plan, plus you're getting, and by the way, the, if you do the one pay, it's literally one pay. There's no hidden fees, there's no hidden charges. If you do the four pay, it very clearly says you will pay four times and then stop, okay? We will not bill you a five times, it's all automated. My system is very precise, so you don't have to, there's nothing weird gonna happen. And you get 100% money back guarantee. For pay, for pay. Somebody said, what's for pay? If you have any special requests, there should be on the page a link to my customer support, my chat, phone number if it's in the day in California time, okay? And you can call if you have any special things. Sometimes people are like, can I split it up on two credit cards? What about PayPal? You can do that with my office, okay? Osdrew Ball Garcia said, hello from Salt Lake City. Where do we have everybody from? One Bitcoin in New Zealand, $10,532. Someone said, I'd rather pay Thai. For what? We got Canadian, Australian, Virginian, Tampa, NYC, Austin, Canada, New Jersey, Michigan. Thai, where's that? San Francisco, B. Rosales. Ad Whitman in Arkansas, congratulations. Stedman Graham in Compton. You're near where I was born. I was born in Long Beach, Compton. Good old Long Beach, Compton. New Zealand, we got West Michigan, Ohio, Texas, Jersey City, Chicago, Washington, D.C., London. Oh, man, it's up. Lewis Buckley, you're up early. Zimbabwe, Manitoba, India, Egypt, San Diego, Pennsylvania, Kashmir, India, Haiti, Jupiter. Man, one of the things I hope you guys will invest in as you... Let me, let, let me just talk about one quick thing as we kind of wrap up here. I want you to get a vision for a second of what life could become. And this is one of the most important visions and one of the most important things in this whole conversation. Those of you who've been, I'm going to give away this iPhone at the end. For those of you who've been waiting faithfully, one person's going to win this, like I said at the beginning. But I want you to listen to this. Imagine your life today. List out, if you want to, either on a piece of paper or your brain, where are you at? Where are you at compared to where you thought you'd be at? Where are you at compared to where you thought you'd be at? It's a very important question. Most people I know are way behind where they thought they'd be. So let's imagine you're right here. Your goal is here. Not just financially, but we're talking about investing, so we'll use the dollar sign. That dollar sign can represent happiness, love, peace, whatever, changing the world, charity, blah, 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 whatever it is. My dogs are talking about that. Ando, shh. <laughs> I got two German Shepherds here. Um, so wherever you thought you'd be, that's all right. I got good news for you and bad news. I'm going to give you both news. What do you want first, the good or the bad? Who wants the good or the bad? What do we got? Good, bad, which one first? Someone say get the bad news first, bad news first. You like the mafia. They said about the Godfather, he said, I work for a man who likes to hear bad news immediately. That's in the original Godfather. Okay, you guys sound like your Godfather type people. Almost everybody's saying bad news. So here's the bad news. Bad news is, I promise you, if your upbringing was different, if your education would, it was, was different, you would already be here, okay? 
for the most part. Let's say you have realistic goals. Let's say you want to, you know, be making six figures. Let's say you want passive investments growing your money for you. I promise you, I don't care if you're 18 or 80, you could have already been there. So let's say this is represents, let's say this represents seven years ahead. Just think for a second, what do you want seven years from now to look like, realistically? Don't say I want to be a billionaire or whatever. Just realistic, awesome goals. What you want your body to look like, what you want your life to look like, what you want your stress, what you want your career to look like, what you want your income to look like, what you want your bank account to look like, what you want your savings account to look like seven years from now. Let's just pick a number. How much money is in your bank account right now? And where do you, how much do you want in cash seven years from now or cash equivalents? It could be Bitcoin, it could be cryptocurrency, it could be gold. What do you want though in liquid, easily liqu liquidated assets? 40,000, okay, what do we got? 3 million, somebody said. 7,000, 1 million, 150 grand. Somebody said 160 grand. Own my first home, 250,000, 50 Gs. Jai Michano said 75 million, okay. So if I average this together, we had a few people put super high and a few people put really low, like 10 grand. Okay, let's just say the average is you want to have 250,000 in cash, plus let's say you have your own house, you have a job you like, and your life is relaxed. I think those are important, and let's say you're in good shape, health-wise, okay? So that's a minimum goal, like at the minimum, that's what you want. Some of you said a lot more. Okay, I got bad news for you. You should have already had it. Unless you're 10 years old watching this, you should have already had it. It is realistic for a 19 year old to have accomplished seven, 250 grand. They might not be married or whatever. Totally, if you don't believe me, uh, you guys don't watch my social media at all. Jalen was just WhatsApping me. We're making a course together. He does wholesaling real estate. He makes $80,000 a month. He's married, married, they got married at 18, young, but whatever. They're happily in love. She's a makeup social media influencer. 80 grand a month. His profit is probably about 20,000 a month. He literally retired in one year of doing that and moved out here to Hollywood. He lives over at that Hollywood and Vine where all the Jake Paul, Logan Paul, all those guys shoot and stuff. So he, he, saved, he could save that in one year. 19. So my bad news it, and if you're like 30 years old watching this, people get with the program. What, you, what do you think? You think it's gonna be handed to you? Things will be given to you? Think that magically one day you'll win the lottery? If that's you, you have the lottery approach to life that things will get better, better through magic? You are kidding yourself. And one day you will look yourself in the mirror and if it's not today, it will come one day. And you'll go, I messed up and I messed up big and I will never get those seven years back. For those of you who wasted seven years, two years, 10 years, 20, you, the bad news is you will never get those years. You can go and pray to God. You can pray to whoever you believe in. You can use the power of positive thinking. You can use meditation and visualization. You can believe in the secret. You can do the law of attraction. You ain't getting the seven years back. So you're seven years behind. The good news, and this is the good news I have for you, there's a way to accelerate the catching up. So let's just say today you agree with me. You go, I wasted seven years of my life. I'm gonna get it on track now. If you go on the normal path that society lays down, it's gonna take you, what did we say? Seven years to get there. Is there an accelerated track? I'm not talking about a get rich quick. That's not what I'm talking about. Acceleration is not the same as get rich quick. If I'm in a car and I wanna drive from Los Angeles to Las Vegas, okay, there's no such thing as get in the car, turn it on, and magically I'm in Las Vegas. I mean, unless you've got a Star Trek teleportation system. As we have current technology, nothing exists for that. But you can get there faster than someone on a bicycle. Most people's approach, they're on a bicycle. This is Los Angeles, that's Las Vegas. Vegas, they're going to have fun. And they get on their little bicycle and they're like, Hey, Ty, I'm going really slow. I'm like, okay, you will get to Las Vegas. 
Hopefully it won't take you seven years, but you know, you'll get there in whatever. A couple days. But you go the fast way and you get in a car, you'll be there, depending on how fast you drive, depending on traffic, you'll be there in under four hours. And there's no bicycle in the world that will ever get you there faster than a car. It's a mathematical and a law of physics that it'd be an impossibility for a human self-propelled, self-propelled vehicle like a bicycle, skateboard, to ever remotely go as fast as a well-tuned combustible machine. Because the combustible machine is the accumulated knowledge of top engineers for the last century. It's the accumulated knowledge of top uh, energy, people who know how to create gas and unleaded gas and super gas. They, they know how to create 12 cylinder, my Lamborghini's 12 cylinder car, 700 horsepower, it's over 700 because it's uh, modified a little bit. So my question is, which tool are you using to get you where you want? This test group that I have open now, it doesn't just give you one tool, it gives you 16 tools. The person who doesn't have the 16 tools, who says, Ty, I'm going to skip all this and I'm going to go learn on my own, go ahead. Good luck on the bicycle. The people who get in my test group are going to pass you up. And I've seen it over and over. I've created millionaires. They come to my house. A guy came to my house at a party. I did a social media influencer party, the largest one in history, um, in August of last year. I had 1,100 of the top social media uh, influencers here. Not all of them, but... 1100 the requirement was you had to whatever at 500,000 Instagram followers or something like that some people slipped in with less but there was monster we posted all posted a selfie and it reached a, a, something like 800 million people and there was a guy there who just came up to me and said Ty you don't know me in 2014 I was broke I was broke I was, I was literally on the verge of bankruptcy and he said I started watching what you did and I started learning from you and I'm not, I'm not trying to take the credit. I'm just telling you a true story. It's not me because I learned from other people. So he took the accumulated learning that he saw in me because it wasn't just me. No man's an island. No one knows everything. He took that accumulated learning and he said, I created a fitness program, online program, and now it's the number one or number two on an on a affiliate network called ClickBank. And he goes, thank you, Ty. I make $500,000 a month. And his profit, I would guess, at 20 to 30% profit margins, he's probably making 100 to $150,000 a month. And he said, I became a millionaire. It took me less than 18 months. I want to thank you, okay? Now, that doesn't happen to everybody who watches me. Let me be clear. I'm telling you exceptional stories, but it's not special in the sense that it could only happen to him. He's not like my brother that I handed him a business. He didn't inherit something from me. Anybody could have done that that put in the strategy that he put in. And that's the key thing to under th understand. He's a black guy. No one cared what he looked like. He was a black guy. Went from zero to $500,000. I'm bringing up race because I wanna make a point. Race doesn't matter when you understand a game of business because nobody really sees you, okay? White or black or Asian, you make 500 Gs a month, in 18 months, you're doing good. Did you know if you make $450,000 a year, you can go on the IRS website, you're in the top 99% of the richest country in the world, which is the United States. The United States GDP is the largest GDP in the world. We're the wealthiest G country by GDP by far. If you look at per capita, there's other smaller countries that have more wealth, but not gross GDP. I mean, America's almost at like $18 trillion and he's in the top 99.99 percentile in a month, because he makes 500,000 a month. Isn't that nuts? And so I want each of you to understand that there are different paths for you over the next seven years. Some of them are gonna be painful. Some of you don't even have a bicycle. You're walking. I mean, people, oh, I'm gonna learn how to invest all on my own. No, you're not. You know who's the best investor in the world? Warren Buffett, right? In 1965, if you had put $10,000 into his investment company, you'd have $50 million today, okay? He's pretty much everybody says he's the best. Bill Gates thinks he's the best. LeBron James learns from him. 
Uh, he has 18,000 people who fly out once a year in May to go to the Berkshire Hathaway. I go there the last three years. Here's the thing about Warren Buffett. He was trained by a guy named ben Benjamin Graham. Benjamin Graham trained him. He had a mentor. So Bill Gates, I mean, Warren Buffett started in learning about investment at age seven. He started buying books. So unless you started at seven, he has 155 IQ. If Warren Buffett needed to learn from other people, are you telling me you don't need to learn from other people? If Warren Buffett started at seven, was mentored by Benjamin Graham, who wrote the textbooks on modern day value investment theory, has 155 IQ, and you're telling me you don't learn from anybody, you're just gonna learn on your own? That's too cocky. You're too cocky to ever make much money. It's the humble who inherit the earth. That was what Jesus Christ said. And it's not just humility like we think about humility, like, oh, somebody who goes, oh, okay, I'm not a good person. That's false humility. Humility is not words, it's actions. I don't care how Warren Buffett acts. If he walks in a room and goes, I'm the richest man in this room, that's just stating a fact. That's not cockiness. But his actions from learning from people and saying, even though I'm 155 IQ, Warren Buffett said, I'm still willing to go find people who know things I don't know. Download their knowledge into my brain. You have to become like a cyborg. You take the greatest things, you put them inside your head. Everybody is wearing Google Glass. You think Google Glass makes you smart? Not yet. That fate, how many people are wearing Google Glass? Now, one day, they will have Google Glass that works. But you know what's faster than Google Glass? Learn from other people. Learn from mentors, learn from books, learn from programs, learn from this test group. That is faster. That is faster. Remember Snapchat glasses? They're rotting in warehouses. I just read an article. Dumb ideas because cyborgs are not yet here. You can't yet put a chip in your brain, but you can put information in your brain, but you ain't gonna get it for free. I think it's funny. People will pay for Google Glass and they'll pay for Snapchat glasses, but they won't pay to learn. Well, I got good news and bad news. For those of you who said, Ty, I see the value in this. I see what you mean. It makes sense. It's logical. It's common sense. But uh, I'm not going to do it. Because some of you have the money and just not going to do it. Some of you don't have the money, so you can't get in, so it's fine. We don't have to talk about that. But some of you are just stubborn. For those of you, I say thank you. Thank you for existing. Because if everybody was a good businessman, it'd be a lot harder for each of us to start our own business because everybody would be good. But the beauty, anytime you see an idiotic person, never get frustrated, get excited because that means they'll never compete with you. Less competition. Do you think I really want, I have 200 million people per year, unique people who watch something of mine on, the, on social media, okay? Do you think I want all 200 million people to actually start a business and compete with me? No. That's why I don't teach everything I know publicly. I create small test groups and I say, if you're really down for me, I'll be down for you. And they say, well, how do I show you're down for me? Well, you gotta pay some money. Well, that's not fair. Okay, then go outside the group. What do you mean? A nightclub, I had to pay $10,000 to sit at a stupid table. Is that a scam? Should I be outside Omnia? Scam, BBB, I had to pay. Or should I go to the doorman at, at the Omnia and go, yo, uh, I'm Ty, let me in free. Are you gonna try, try that strategy? That's what people do to me, they're like, Ty, give me everything that you've devoted over a decade of your life, you know, tens of millions of dollars, um, give it to me free. I'm like, nah, you, what have you ever done for me? There's a rule of life, be down for the people who had your back and who have your back. If you got a friend and you're at a bar, and a fight breaks out, and somebody runs up and hits you from behind and your friend could have helped you, and he just walks off, he ain't your friend. When you needed him, he wasn't there. So the way I think about it is, if I go to Omnia and I go, give me a table, they go, why? We built this damn nightclub, we got staff, it costs us, they pay Calvin Harris $400,000 a month they go, I mean, uh, uh, not a month, per show. 
Why should we have to let you in free, Ty? Pony up your money and then you come in. If you want to be down for us, we'll be down for you and we'll give you a table. But it's funny that people go, well, we'll die. Give us everything you know. No, I don't want everybody to compete with me. But I'm willing to share with the 1% or 2% of people who are really committed. And if you think that's unfair, then good. Go give all your information for free. Make your own YouTube channel. Make your Instagram. And you can be a better person than me. I think this is fair. And that's how I call it. So for those of you who go, I don't care about the, I mean, I care that you're charging and I think it's unfair. I agree to disagree. I agree to disagree. Now, some people say, aren't there people on social media that give away everything for free? Nah. They got their books in Barnes and Noble. They're making millions of dollars. But I'm giving you a video course, which I can update faster than books. I'm writing a book, but books are not better than, and I love books. But um, trust me, people pay to go to their conferences. You pay. You pay. Money floats around this world. You pay for what you want. I love that nobody ever walks, walks into a Starbucks and says, yo, uh, where's my uh, free Subway? A, nobody ever goes to McDonald's and says, where's my free Big Mac? And McDonald's isn't even good for you, and people still pay for it. It's a good world we live in. The good news for those of you, let me read off more people getting in. I got good news for you. All you people who are getting in, you're getting what's called a competitive advantage. Remember this. Most powerful tool in business is what's called, it's called different things. Some people call it a moat. That's what Warren Buffett. Some people call it competitive advantage. You know what my mentor, my personal mentor, used to call it? He, he had kind of a cross between the two. He said, Ty, never do a business where you don't have an unfair advantage. And people go, oh, that's not fair. Yeah, exactly. It isn't fair. It's called unfair event. Do you think it's fair that LeBron James is six foot eight? He got an unfair advantage. So if, if LeBron James was 18 years old asking me what he should do, I'd be like, LeBron, what do you have an unfair advantage in? Oh, I'm six foot eight and I'm really good at basketball. Then play basketball, my friend. What's my unfair advantage? What will be your unfair advantage? You'll know stuff that most people don't know when you come through this three month test group. Give me three months. Give me three months, I'm gonna show you what they forgot to teach you in school from age six to age 18, 12 years. Somebody said, John Jones, a UFC fighter. I met him. I met him at a UFC fight. I went to one of the Conor McGregor, Nate Diaz ones. John Jones was there. He had an 84 inch reach, unfair advantage. Nobody, that's not a, that's what you want. So you and I are not UFC fighters. We're not pro basketball players, you know, but we can have an unfair advantage in the brain. And when you get the unfair advantage in the brain, how do you get it? By learning, 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 learning. Somebody said, but how much did LeBron pay for his unfair advantage? You're right, LeBron didn't have to pay for it. He was born with genetics to make him tall. So whoever said that, I think your point was saying you shouldn't have to pay. No, the point is, if you ain't born with genetic stuff, then you gotta go out and get it. It's different. LeBron's even more unfair because he did, you know, but LeBron worked for it. Trust me, LeBron worked for it, man. So key thing for each of you is if you're not born with wealth, if you're not born the best looking person, the tallest person, the strongest person, you still have one potential unfair advantage, what you know. And I promise you, if you begin to learn about investing, if you begin to learn about investing, you will have an unfair advantage about 99, over 99 0.9% of people. Really? All right, let's see who's getting in. All right, here we go. Danny Lopez, same last name. What's up, man? Danny is from California. Kenneth Briscoe, congratulations, did the full pay out of Colorado. Thomas Cushman, oh no, that's a different program, sorry. I get all my alerts here. Eosa Puleta, where are you from? Ah, oh, doesn't even have a location, okay. Congratulations, Andrew White. Boom, British Columbia, congrats. Miguel Barita from Cal, man, there's a lot of Californians. I think my software, if we can't detect your IP, we defaulted to California. So there's probably not quite as many people from California. All right, any last questions? I'm gonna wrap up. 
We've been on here for getting close to three hours. Ty, I have three grand in stocks. In one stock, will this teach me on how to make this grow? If you have all your investable assets in one stock, you're probably taking an unnecessary risk, unless it's a company you have control of. That's a key thing. By the way, I'll put this link up here one more time. So it's important for you guys to understand that being diversified in the correct way is good. You can be over diversified and under. I would say if I only had three grand, I probably wouldn't pick a stock that I don't know much about that I had no control over. By the way, you can click the button if you see a button, depending on where you're watching this. Should be a button somewhere here you can click. Um, but in general, doing single stocks as a passive investor with all your investable assets is not a wise idea, okay? Like I said, unless you have some control. Ty, how can capital gains from S-Corps investments be avoided? So when it comes to taxes, just in general, it's very case by case, but capital gains you usually want. Capital gains is better than, or in the United States, capital gains tax rate is much lower depending on than ordinary income tax. So usually you're not trying to avoid cap, you're actually trying to, you want long-term capital gains. Short-term capital gains are generally the same as um, you know, ordinary income. So what else? How much would you charge to be my mentor, Xanis? Well, that's what this test group is. And you're gonna get access, the number one bonus out of the 15 is getting access three times over three months, once a month, to me personally live. In a small group, it's not available to the public, so it's small. This live cast will have tens of thousands of people, even more. So it's, it's, I can't talk to everybody, but I have a small group for those of you. That's why I create the test groups. How crucial is social media in today's business world? Well, how's everybody talking to me right now? For the most part, most people reach me through social media. You can add email marketing in there, but I would say however important you think social media is, multiply it by three, okay? I have a great freaking idea for an ICO, but need a team trying to link it up. Yep, you need the one of the bonuses there on business networking, how to connect with business partners. Ty, are there lessons in the program? Yep, we just recorded the first ones today. So, you'll have plenty. You'll have more than you can go through. Best markets in India to invest. Just because you live in India doesn't mean you can have to only invest in India. I've told you, the world's flat. It's faceless, you can invest anywhere. You can invest with any, uh, in any stock exchange. You can invest in things that aren't in stock exchanges. Don't be limited by your surroundings, man. You got the internet now. You can literally connect everywhere. Social media better than Google? They're all about the same. I mean, social media in a certain sense is Google. Google used to have their stupid little, remember Google tried to do a Facebook? Google Hangouts? Not Google Hangouts, they had that little circle weird thing. Didn't go so well, but Google's still dom. I consider Google somewhat social media because the way that the Google indexing and linking works is they look at social voting. Basically, other high-ranking sites point into the same site. So it's a little different, but it's a modification uh, of, you know, marketing. Google space. Ty, I want to start a heart hospital. Bonus number five is the Entrepreneur Starter Kit. How to get started to create cash flow so you can begin to invest. These work together. How, Ty, Ty, how do I turn income properties into business? Easy. Create a rental income business. You create a property management business. Many ways. Someone said, Ty, glad I was listening. Glad you were here too. Are you going to have another network meetup in LA soon? Um, so what you guys are getting access to, there's more. When you talk to the strategy team, if you ever want to meet me in person, I do some seminars here at the house. So you can talk to them. You're, for those of you getting in now, so just to repeat, you click the link or click the button that's here. The next page will be the quick 256-bit uh, SSL encrypted cre credit card checkout page. As quickly as you put your info in there, you'll get access into the court, uh, into the program. You'll get access into the test group. You'll also have the, the w ability to schedule 
the strategy call. I recommend you do that strategy call so that we can take the program and tell you like, we'll know like, oh, you wanna watch lesson number eight or this or this, this is more important. We can customize stuff for you, okay? I think we can stop with Instagram. I'm about to go off, so you can just not restart it. Yeah, it just went off. Ty, are you reading off which comments? I'm reading off all of them. When's the next Ethereum meetup? I might do one in January. For me, Google works hella good, but it's expensive. Is life insurance good? We'll be talking about investing through life insurance, whether it's good. Life insurance is a very important subject. There's $5 trillion in US assets in, held by life insurance companies and reserves and say, it's a lot. It's a big thing. People don't know. Annuities too, we'll talk about. Uh, Ty can make you richer, email me. <laughs> uh, how do I start a financial advisory firm? I've got a different program on that. What's the biggest mistake business owners make? No competitive advantage. They don't know enough. Life should be 50% planning and strategy and 50% execution. I meet people teaching that it's all about execution, so they have people just running around with their head cut off like a chicken, and I know that people who have 50% uh, do 100% planning and they sit in front of Excel spreadsheet and they get procrastination uh, by over analysis, you know, paralysis by over analysis. So you, you really got to be a balanced person. That's why I say you take this course, you watch 15 minutes a day or something like that for three or four days a week on your phone while you're walking to work, while you put a headset, you can listen to the audio while you're driving or, well, not headset, but whatever you put it in, uh, put on your iPad and then you go out and do stuff. That's why it's not a full-time course that you have to do nine, you know, 90 hours a week or something like that. So I think that's about it. I'm gonna get you motivated. The program, you're gonna be in the tribe, you're gonna be in the networking group. Look at all the bonuses you're gonna get. I mean, this stuff's worth $6,500. It actually is. It's not me making this number up. You got all these options. This is the core program, all the 23 or more things you're gonna learn. Then you got the bonuses. This is the actual amount people pay for the bonuses. Have paid, 15 of them. By the way, if you get overwhelmed, just don't go through everything. You don't have to go through everything. In fact, I put more in on purpose than you need because different people have different needs, if that makes sense. So, awesome guys. Click the link. The, yeah, click the link. It's either a button here. If you have any questions, call my office. The number should be somewhere, if you're on my site, uh, on the webinar, on this page. Email, live chat. Let us help you. Don't procrastinate. The difference between most people who fail and most people who are success is not how smart they are. It's not who they were born to. Sometimes successful people just did something when everybody else froze. When everybody else procrastinated, you do something, and guess what? You'll be wrong every once in a while, but nine times out of 10, you'll leave the procrastinators behind. Procrastination kills hopes and dreams. If you've been procrastinating, you're seven years behind where you should be, and that's a painful lesson. That's the bad news. The good news is if you get the right tools, you can get to your goal way faster than the average person. You can accelerate it. So get in the test group. I want to accelerate your success as best I know how, and that's all we could do. All right? So talk to you soon. Thanks so much for being here. And oh, let's give this bad boy away. I'm going to do this to the fifth person who answers this question correctly. The fifth person, not the first. That gives everybody on all of these time to catch up. Oh, turn Instagram back on so that I can... I told people I would do this, so. By the way, I forgot one thing. Ready? You snooze, you lose. If you don't get access to this, you're gonna lose all the bonuses. Go ahead and turn it on. You're gonna lose the bonuses. That's a key thing people forget. They're like, ah, oh, time to think about it. The reason I put so many bonuses is because the people who are really interested, you know who you are, jump in. If, you, if it's a reasonable thing for you to get in, there's nothing to think about. It's got a 100% money back guarantee. If you procrastinate, let me be clear you'll lose $6,500 worth of stuff. This package that we do, this package is only for this, you know, this call. So, all right, as I promised, let us give the phone away. Uh, this is an iPhone, 128 gigs. This is a black one. Uh, we'll send it to you. 
Okay, whoever wins, fifth person to correctly answer this question, I am going to send it. Let me think what question I have. Oh, I know. One of the people who got in the test group was from a very exotic country. What was the name of the country? I said it about 20 minutes ago. Fifth person to name the country. I read it out loud. He got in the test group. Someone said Venezuela. No. All right. I see one person. I see two there on YouTube. We'll get, remember, we're picking the fifth one. I'm bouncing around everywhere. I see one on Instagram. What's up with uh, Facebook? So, okay, first person. All right, I'm closing my eyes. I'm spinning around. The first one I see, fifth person I see. Dion, tell me when to stop, Armin. Stop. Okay, we're going to Twitter. Right there, I see. Next one. There it is. Swiggin' Cheeks said Indonesia. That was as fair as I could do it. I closed my eyes. Somebody off camera said stop where my hand was, I pointed, it was, it was Twitter. If you don't win today, I'm giving away stuff basically every day. So congratulations to Twitter, swigging, at swing, what an interesting name, oh, swinging cheeks. I don't even wanna know what that username means. <laughs> so we're gonna end it right there. It sounds something that I don't wanna know about, because especially because I think it's a guy. So uh, talk to you soon, and thanks for being here.